actually uh, sworn in yet, so that's going to be first on the agenda. But um, I'd like to welcome you all to tonight's select board meeting. Um, and I'm going to ask that if anybody else comes in, if you could help us make sure they sign in so we capture everybody in attendance. It's, it's on the chair great. next all to you. Gail. We'll do that. Uh, all of you have signed in, but if you could help us with that. So why don't we go down the road very quickly for those of you who don't know our new incoming select board members. We'll start right here. I'm Barbara Butler, your assistant town clerk. Jordan Keyes. Gabrielle Molina. Ann Kulin. Jamie Morby. And Ann Winchester. Woohoo! <laughs> Additions or changes to the agenda? Does anybody? Yes, <laughs> I have two things that just came in today that require action before our next meeting. So the first thing I'd like to add is um, the road crew has uh, gotten a bid for pavement crack. Pavement crack. Okay, would you speak up, please? <clears throat> the, road crew has, the, the road crew has just gotten a bid. They, they sent this out to bid, and it's for, let me just get these words right, pavement crack ceiling. Pa pavement crack ceiling. And that needs to be authorized for them to accept the bid immediately. So I'd like to add that to the agenda. Okay, and do you know where on the agenda you would like to try fit it in? <coughs> oh. Yeah. What did you say, Jordan? Is there a section for new? There, new there is not. not. Oh, that's a good thing to add in the future, isn't it? So why don't we? Um, I would try to get it in in the six to seven o'clock yeah. slot if we With can. The six to seven. Okay. If All right. Can. The road crew, and it's a, it's a pavement crack. Is it a sealant, yeah. A and T, and now? Yes. It, okay. No ceiling because they ceiling. they're going to crack. Okay. They're going to crack. I'm sorry. They're going to um, <laughs> crack up. They're going to crack up. <laughs> they're they're, they're going to add. They're hiring somebody to do it. Okay. Or that's what the bid is. For. Okay. So we'll okay. do that at the end of the uh, 6:05 bullet. Yes. I will try. Okay, yes. you have a second thing. I have a second one. The Woodbury Fire Department is um, currently um, working on rebuilding their fire station. And they would like to ask the, our, our federal senators, Senator Welsh and Senator um, Sanders, to put on the earmarks that they're allowed to get each year, the senatorial earmarks. They're going to ask for 15% of that cost. And they would like a letter of support from us. And they have to have it by Thursday. <laughs> so I'd like to add that to the agenda too. So, and they told me that about two hours ago. <laughs> so why don't we add that at the end of the seven o'clock, at the this last bullet of the seven o'clock hour? Is that okay? Yep. Okay. Okay. Anything else then? Okay, any other changes? To the agenda, additions? Okay, hearing none, we shall move on then. Okay, so uh, we are now going to swear in our new select board members. So uh, Jamie and Ann actually got sworn in a couple of days ago, so they're all taken care of. So we're gonna swear, swear in Jordan and Gabrielle and Ann. And so you have your oath of office in front of you. Uh, you actually, we actually fill it out twice, you sign it twice, put the town of palace twice. And so what they, this is their oath of office and we will get them to all agree to it after I've read it to you. So I, or he, Jordan Keyes, she, Gabrielle Molina, she, and Tula, do solemnly swear that they will faithfully execute the office of select board state of Vermont and will therein do equal right and justice to all persons to the best of their judgment and ability according to the law. So help me God, as they say, under the pains and penalties of perjury, this day in Calais, March 13th, 2023. Do you all agree? I do. Agree. Okay. If you'll sign it twice and then pass them back to me. I will uh, notarize them and file them in the town office. Congratulations and thank you all very much. 
Okay, and so up next will be the election of officers. The select board will elect their own officers. And so um, we will, what, what's your pleasure? Would you like to do uh, chair, vice chair in that order or do them together as a slate? Do you have any guys, do you have any? If not, I'll just run it. Okay, you choose. so um, do you, we're going to open the floor to this group of five people to not make any nominations for the Office of Select Board Chair. Do we have any nominations? I nominate Ann Winchester. Everybody please speak up. <laughs> I nominate Ann Winchester. Second. Okay. okay, so we have Ann Winchester. Hold on, I'm taking minutes too. Okay, so chair is Ann Winchester. That was Gabrielle with a second, a second from Jordan Keyes. Uh, do we, any, any conversation, any discussion about that nomination? You, you might want to ask if there's another nomination. I'm not going to do that. Any discussion about that nomination? Okay, any further nominations for the Office of Select Board Chair? Okay, and uh, we have a nomination and a second. If elected, would you be willing to serve? Do you accept, <laughs> you accept a nomination? Yes. Do you accept a nomination? Thank you. Okay, so we have a nomination and a second. Uh, do we? Do I hear a motion that Ann Winchester serve for the ensuing year, a one-year term, for select board chair? Do I hear a motion? So. Gabrielle, thank you. Second. I'll second. Okay, thank you. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. And congratulations to you. are the new select board chair. <laughs> Would you like to do the vice chair election? Okay. <laughs> thank you all. Uh, we're daunted. Speaking for me, I'm daunted. So, um, yes. Do I hear any nominations for vice chair? Rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> I would nominate Gabrielle to be vice chair. Do I hear a second? Not a second, no. Okay, are there any other nominations? Okay, then uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Should we ask if she wants to accept <laughs> it? Oh, yeah, Is that okay, Gabrielle? Yes. <laughs> all right, congratulations to you. Um, I see Jeremy isn't here, and we were going to talk yes. to him about um, training the town, the, the new town clerk. So let's put that off for a minute and move to the next one, which is a candidate for Office of Interim Treasurer. And she has made a, uh, she, Sandra has come forward and made a proposal. She would like to return on a consulting basis. Now, you guys all have copies of the document that Sandra sent us. And Jordan, can you get that up for people to read? No. Uh, I so she's made a proposal um, that she would work at a rate of $75 an hour for 20 oh. hours a week on the condition that we, she has an assistant who does some of the work and that we keep Nemric on as payroll. And she has done a really nice, thorough list of what she sees as the duties, which she says she can do in 20 hours a week. Um, I don't know how you're going to read that whole document up there. We have a few extra copies if anybody would like to see it. Do, don't we, Barbara? This is yes, an we extra. Yes, we do. Actually, they just came down to the end of the road. Here's one. Yeah, and we all have these electronically, so yeah. we don't need to. So Sandra is standing by so that we can talk to her. Are, are you ready for me to get her on the phone or not yet? Let me just ask, does anybody want to comment on this before we get Sandra on the phone? It's a long time. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm having trouble hearing you. What did you ask? Uh, if anybody wanted to comment on oh, okay. uh, before we... Thank you. And Scott said it's about time. <laughs> anybody else? All right, yes. Can you get Sandra on the yes. phone, please? So this may require going into executive session, we'll see.
Sandra. You're on speakerphone. This is Anne. Hi, Hi there. Is that, is that, who is that? <laughs> this is Anne of Winchester. Hi, Anne. I... But you're speaking to all of us. Um, so Jamie, um, Ann Tulin, Gabrielle, and Jordan are here, and a few people are out in the audience. Okay. And we've all uh, had a chance, I think we've all, I hope we've all had a chance to look at the proposal, and at this time, well, do you want to say anything, Sandra, before we open it up for questions? No. Mm -mm. You, um, ready to take any questions you have. Okay. I'll take Questions, anybody? Go ahead. Um, hi, Sandra. This is Gabrielle Molina, and I am a new select board member. And I'm uh, being unfamiliar with the way treasurer was the last time the town had a treasurer. How many hours a week did you work then? I work anywhere from 40 to maybe 55, depending on the time of year. I had uh, the way. It was set up at that time. I had uh, an assistant treasurer for basically four hours a week, but most, almost all of that time was used during tax time. So I did everything from soup to nuts. And um, that is how I was able to accomplish the tasks that needed to be done. Okay. So coming back at this point, I, I'm not, I am, I do not have the time to come back on a full-time basis. I can come back on a half-time basis as long as the supports are in place that have been in place for the, for the year that I was gone. So the, uh, the assistant treasurer uh, picked up a lot of slack in terms of uh, what the tasks that I used to do. And I and in order to work that twenty hours a week, that support would need to be continued. It's not doable otherwise. So it was doable when you were working forty plus hours a week and you had an assistant treasurer? Well, yeah, and again, as I said, it was at various times of the year, it was more than 40 hours a week. I had an assistant treasurer for four hours a week. That was what was budgeted. And that uh, time really was confined to tax time. It's about 250 hours. Uh, let's see, four times 50. Yes, yeah, about 200 hours a year. And most of all of that was uh, used during the three or four months that we collected taxes. So I'm not, I'm, Gabrielle, I'm, I'm not coming back as your permanent treasurer. Uh, I'm coming back to, uh, the, well, I, you guys have asked me to come back. And this is the way that I can do it. I've been gone a year. And so it's just, uh, this is how I have the time. Yeah, yeah, and you could potentially put systems in place for the future. Right, exactly. Okay, I'm done. Anybody else? Um, hi, Sandra, this is Jordan. Hi, um, Jordan. Good to meet you remotely. Um, I was curious. Um, it seems like your uh, your preference is to try to work as remotely as possible. Uh, I'm just a little concerned in whether or not the infrastructure can be actually set up to accommodate that. It, uh, I, I think it probably can be, uh, but it might take some time to uh, to get that set up. Um, in the interim or in the event that we, we can't fully implement it uh, so that it's fully remote, would you uh, be willing to uh, come into the office and, and get the files that, that you need or, or work a couple of hours in the office? Well, that's a great question, Jordan. Um, when COVID hit in 2020, I was 
for all intents and purposes, fully remote for two and a half years until April 1st of last year when I retired. So it is absolutely doable to, um, for me anyway, to function remotely with the understanding that I, I will have to come into the office. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe I came into the office one day a week at, during that period of time. And during tax time, of course, it, and budget time, so of course it was more frequent. But the uh, setting up of me remotely is very simple. That, you know, we have, I turned it back in my laptop and monitors. Uh, what our IT people do is, is, you know, assign me a VPN address and I can access the account server. So we actually had systems in place for me to work remotely for two and a half years. And in fact, Nimrick is working remotely now uh, for much of what they do. So if, if we can do it, but I do anticipate having to come into the office, um, you know, fairly frequently to grab checks, make deposits, and so forth. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks. Anything else? Anybody? Questions? So would this be a one-year contract? Uh, this, I think we're thinking one year, um, but it can be shorter than that. You may hire someone during that period of time, uh, and their training can go very quickly. And if it's less than a year, that's fine. I, I kind of view it as um, something that would, you know, within that period of time, we can see what systems are in place, what systems need to be retweaked and get you, uh, get your uh, position of treasurer sorted out and then get someone hired. So, you know, um, I, I don't uh, see this as a, a actual period of time of a year. It could go out a year. I would like it not to go out beyond a year and it could certainly be shorter than a year. If, if it, you know, that suits the board. She, is okay. yeah. In your opinion, Sandra, would we no longer need the services of a contract of the contract that we have with Nemeric? Yes, that contract for them to be performing the basic treasurer duties would no longer be necessary. I do see them continuing in their role as payroll um, payroll support. That that. <laughs> On average, that takes about eight hours a week. And when you look at tax filing, W-2s, 1099, so all of that is part of payroll, onboarding people into the software and offboarding them into the, from the software. That type of thing um, really sucks up a lot of time on average. So I think they should stay in that role and uh, I would expect them to stay in that role, and that frees me up again to get things in order in that 20 hours a week. But you wouldn't need them otherwise. There would be some sort of a handoff. I would need um, to talk with when she should close your March general ledger. It's the end of your quarter. There's reporting that would have to be done by her, and um, and then uh, she could theoretically she would be finished. Hey, Gabriel. Yes. Okay. Jordan, go ahead. Uh, I need a minute to uh, to recall what the question was, but <laughs> so, uh, sorry. Oh, Donna, go yeah. ahead. This is Donna Fitch. Mm -hmm. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Donna. Hi. <laughs> uh, what? We do not have an assistant treasurer now, correct? And why not? I think Barbara continues to operate as assistant treasurer. I don't uh, know what or if her title was changed after I left, but I I am I know that she provided support uh, to Nimric to keep the financial aspects of the office going smoothly. I, it wouldn't have worked without someone fulfilling that role. It, it just couldn't have worked. So I don't know what her title was at that 
time. When I left, he was assistant treasurer. Um, and that, that I was doing, she continued to operate, uh, at least to be paid out of that cell for some period of time. Uh, our auditors want us to have an official assistant treasurer, correct? I, I did not hear that. Um, our auditors want us to have an official assistant treasurer. I'm just repeating Donna's question. She, uh, that's a yeah, question. The auditors would want an assistant treasurer. It's absolutely. You, you want somebody, uh, and you want a backup in that position. Just like you would want a backup assistant counselor. Well, that's statutory, but uh, it's, it's, those roles are important uh, to have some redundancy. Okay, I think Barbara. I can, I can answer what's... Donna's question a little bit more fully. So I resigned as assistant treasurer shortly after Sandra left without a treasurer. It seemed a little strange to have an assistant treasurer without a treasurer to report to or supervise. So I resigned as assistant treasurer. However, in the absence of a treasurer and an assistant treasurer, I have continued serving, fulfilling those functions for the past year wrapped into my role as assistant town clerk. They actually increased because in the absence of a treasurer, I actually did all the data entry of all the tax checks and so forth into the Nimrick system and in cash receipts and then transfer into GL and tax administration. So my, out, my hours and my participation increased without the title, but the function was being, we kept the lights on. <laughs> Anyone else have any questions? Jordan, you got uh, yours. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, so the uh, proposed rates um, and, and hours are, are associated kind of with the tasks that you outlined, and that was uh, pretty comprehensive. Thank you for putting that together. Um, I'm curious whether or not um, uh, you thought that should we hire somebody uh, before 12 months with that same kind of rate and fee structure apply for um, hours that would that would be spent more for training or passing off as as opposed to the kind of higher level report generation and system uh, generating or, or is there some room for should we get traction and momentum um, kind of revisiting revisiting those fees for Later duty work. Um, I that that's a hard question to answer, but as long as I am in the interim role, if I'm training or if I'm working, that would be the rate. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Other questions? All right, then I'm going to ask you guys what you'd like to do. We could go into executive session if you want to deliberate. If you don't feel the need to deliberate, we can go ahead and um, entertain a motion now. Or would you like some more time to think about it? Uh, I kind of feel the need to deliberate. Okay. All right. With Sandra or just us? Uh... I, I think with Sandra would be fine. Okay, how would we do that logistically? <laughs> uh, would we take the phone into the closet? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I was assuming, yeah, I've never been in there. No, I, I didn't <laughs> expect you to answer that. I think <laughs> that's... Really? Go outside. Are you okay? It's, well, it's, it's not that cold out. Oh, yeah. Would you if, guys If, if there's not there. the phone, we, we retreat to the back. <laughs> <laughs> With the phone, we can't do that. <laughs> so, having said that, I would entertain a motion to go into executive session for the purpose of discussing this further with Barbara, and we would be doing it under three, it was 1 VSA section 313, where the heck is my, I'm supposed to, oh, here it is, it's right in front of me, uh, 313A, B, labor relations and agreements with employees. Will so, somebody please? So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Who was the second? Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. We, I will now entertain a motion to accept Sandra's proposal as written. Uh, so moved. Oh, did we vote on going coming out of executive session? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> All in favor? 
Aye. 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 Okay. Now motion, please. Uh, so moved. Second. Second. Okay. So there's a motion to accept Sanders' proposal to come back sometime between April 1st and April 15th as written in the contract or in the uh, proposal that Sandra gave us. Is there any discussion on that? Any, including folks out, out there, if anybody has anything to say. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeremy, yes. I think it's an amazing idea. <laughs> okay. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> okay, hearing no more discussion, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Yay, Sandra, oh, right. welcome Ooh. back on board. For how many hours? Um, I wouldn't think it would be much more. I don't know actually, but it, I don't. I don't think it'd be like more than twelve hundred bucks worth or something like that. I think between now we're up to seven hours right now, um, and typically we haven't been doing like eight or ten hour days. It's three or four hours, and then it's like okay, let me and she'll do that for a while. So okay. hard to say, but 20, 20 or thirty hours max, I would think, and then that um, would allow. Because of the cyclical nature of it, I know that there's other folks around who can help out as well, but whenever you uh, paint yourself into a corner for a second, it's nice to be able to reach out and, you know, have a phone conversation. I was able to do that with Judy, where we'd be like, talk for an hour on the phone in the evening or something about how to address an issue or how to, whatever. Um, so there would be some amount of time available for that. All right, questions for Jeremy? So you'll be in the town office this week? Mm -hmm. um, and you'll be in the town office this week? I'll be there. I'm planning to be there eight to four every day this week. Okay. I, it will be more than 32 hours for a while, but like getting up this week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you have resigned your other post? Yeah, and all done school. Okay. Yeah, I guess they kind of knew what was coming, huh? They, they allowed me to do a, a letter of resignation pending election results. So I was allowed to do more than two weeks. And then if I hadn't gotten elected, they would just let me slide back in and not. Other questions? Um, then I would like to suggest that we do go into the, to executive session for the purpose of negotiating. And I went uh, with Jeremy a little bit. Um, and uh, therefore, I'd entertain a motion. In effect. Uh, so 
Uh, Jordan, uh, made the motion, and then Gabrielle. Thank you. I'm sorry, when you're not uh, listening, sorry, you're folks. Sorry, folks. Can we just talk about stairs? Sure, I guess so. It's not heated upstairs. Oh, it's it's well, it's raining. Oh, oh, okay. oh. If it's just us and there's no phone, should we just go in the utility room? We can do that. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody like to make a motion? Oh, sorry, we have to move to come out of executive <laughs> session. Somebody make a motion to do that. Uh, second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, now, would somebody like to make a motion? I would like to move that Jeremy be hired to train the new town clerk with a max budget of 1500 which is roughly 30 hours of training at $50 an hour. And uh, Tegan, we would ask for you to manage those hours. Yep. Is there a second? A second. Is there any okay, discussion? I'm sorry. Second. Second. And, and, and that, and um, just a moment. May I just read it back to you, please? Thank you. Okay, so the motion is to hire Jeremy Weiss to train the new town clerk with a maximum of fifteen hundred dollars at thirty dollars and, and cap at thirty hours at fifty dollars an hour. Okay, that was the motion by Gabrielle, seconded by Dan. Thank you. Any discussion? Okay, hearing nothing. All in favor? Please say aye. 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 Okay. Congratulations okay. and thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Yeah. All right. Let's see. It's seven o'clock, and we're supposed to move on, but I think we could probably bump some of the administrative stuff a little bit if we need to talk to people. So yeah. um, let's talk about candidate for interim treasurer. And sorry, we did that one. Inter um, select board administrator. Is that what's next? Yeah. Yes. And pos and also assistant treasurer. While we're at it. And our assistant town clerk has offered to take that on an interim basis. And Barbara, would you just like to tell us briefly how that would work? Yes, certainly. So I'm just going to pass down uh, my resume as well as palace references. So um, I see, and I'm a select board administrator. First of all, you've got to come up with a job description. This is an interim if we do this until such time as you actually have a job description and a fuller understanding as to your goals and expectations of this person. But at least here in the early weeks, if it, 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 it extends to a couple of months, okay, of just trying to help you guys get organized, put structure around your work, keep track of tasks, deadlines, where paperwork is, when paperwork needs to be signed and submitted to other third parties and so forth. Just trying, basically being your executive assistant, I think, is the easiest way to say. Just trying to help you guys get yourselves organized going forward and not lose track of deadlines and tasks to do. Questions for Barbara? So Barbara, you envision approximately how many hours that you would be taking on we had at one point talked about three jobs. What am I remembering? Well, <laughs> Sandra, my understanding was in her proposal to you, one of the, her conditions for, was to have me back as her assistant treasurer. That's it, assistant treasurer, assist, uh, select board administrator, and assistant town clerk. Yeah. So yeah. tell us how all those three would work together. Okay, so for right now I see my primary job is assistant town clerk. Um, the assistant treasurer, I've basically been doing already, so I'm already like in the groove with those two jobs. This is just adding a new function. I think um, it may be front loaded, busy here at the beginning while we get the systems in place. I don't see it being uh, more than a few weeks of just trying to figure out how we're going to get this, how we're going to get this structured, and what's the tracking me mechanism to keep everything on track. Um, I think maybe. 10 to 15 hours a week. And I'm just, we're ballparking here. We've never, none of us have ever done this before. And did you say your rate that you want? Um, I, for the purposes of interim, I would just say the same rate that I'm being paid as assistant town clerk and assistant treasurer. Just keep, just keep it all. And it would be just um, spread out on my timesheet as I turn that into Nimrit to run payroll. 
how many hours I did assistant town clerk. Now I'll start logging the hours for assistant treasurer. So it comes from that line item. And then when I'm working for you guys, it would be a third line item on my timesheet to Nimrick. So whoever's running payroll will be tracking each of those line items. The one question, one thing I would like to request is a separate select board administrator uh, email account so that it's separate from my assistant town clerk work to keep it all separate and easier to organize. And I would like to point out that this would give, easily give Barbara enough time that she would become a full-time employee and therefore begin Finally. to receive benefits. Finally. Yes. <laughs> yes. Question? Yes, please. So, Barbara, is it your intention to do this on an interim basis? I think until you are, as a select board, are ready to uh, post the position, I would encourage you, I, just as a matter of principle, I encourage the select board to post every open position, not just hire somebody because it's a light body and she's agreed to do it. So when, when the job description has been written and you guys are actually ready to appoint someone long term, that it be posted. And at that point in time, I'll decide if I want to apply along with anybody else in town. So I see it as interim mm -hmm. until such time as the select board and I are ready to reevaluate. One uh, thing I envision is that it would be useful to know the hours of the three different positions. Mm -hmm. And you've suggested that you would separate it out on your timesheet. And you may, being a community-minded person that you are, want to make sure you don't go over 40 on your timesheet at least. But I, I would want to know like the true amount of hours that it takes. So would you be like, you know, not worried about the over? And I don't even know if it, that gets into overtime or not. But it's important for us to know in the future. How many hours we're hiring for it if you know if indeed it becomes not one person yeah so um i already at times work more than 40 hours a week over the last six years i've never been paid time and a half i just get paid straight time even if it's over like last week i worked over 52 hours but it was town meeting it was the election it was a long long day uh plus other long plus other long days um and I've never expected time and a half, never, never, and I don't expect time and a half. Um, but I do understand you wanting to know for it the purpose of- It might be a legal responsibility. So. Yeah, I'm less worried about time, time, time and a half. Yeah. 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 I, I will tell you, Sandra as treasurer and Wendy as uh, interim acting treasurer has never paid time and a half. Yeah, but the, Sandra might have been on salary. She was. Well, no, no, no. I'm saying never paid me oh, time and a half, even though I was turning in more than 40 hours. So that that that's a that's a governing issue for this group. Well, it might be a legal issue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I think we we should probably uh, look in, into that um, before we make a, a final decision because I, there's definitely a, a difference uh, between salary obligations to, to pay for extra time and salary positions and, and hourly positions. So I uh, just want to make sure that, uh, but for that, one, Barbara is compensated for her extra time and then we're tracking the real costs of those, uh, of those hours uh, to get real, uh, to your point, I think. And, and to answer your question, I will definitely track the hours so that when you're ready for a job description mm -hmm. and to post it, you know, Depending on how long we've been doing this, it may be several weeks, it may be a couple months, we don't know. You'll, but by then you'll know how many hours I've been spending on this job, I would say. Okay. Other questions? Discussion? Um, I'm wondering how to do it now, because we'd like, we really need to get Barbara on board now. So could we do something like keep say please don't log more than 40 hours until we've had a chance to look into this time and a half i think if our if our intent i mean if she could be back paid for hours out over 40 i mean oh, i think she okay. should record her true hours and she should be paid uh, accordingly I go mean, ahead sorry, put that I in the no put that, that in the form of a motion please put it into a motion <laughs> Uh, well, Jordan, you were the one that was concerned about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
I mean, does that does it allay your concerns if we knew that we would be doing the right thing upon finding oh, out yeah. what the right thing yeah, is? Yeah, yeah, no, I think okay. you're, I think you're absolutely right. You can always go back and do that. Yeah. Okay. So now I'll motion. I move that we um, hire Barbara Butler as the assistant town treasurer and assistant town clerk. Actually, the treasurer appoints the tech right. assistant treasurer. Got it. So oh. you guys don't need to do that. I'm appointed, Tegan appointed me assistant town clerk. I work for the treasurer. The treasurer will appoint me. Okay, so we don't need to hire you at all. We for are that function. Okay. We do Just for the select board. Select board. board. Okay. I nominate Barbara Butler and I re rescind my former motion, <laughs> by the way. I nominate Barbara Butler to be the select board administrator. Okay. Do we prepare a second? It, it, interim select board commissioner. Interim select board commissioner. Commissioner? <laughs> okay, you make a motion, which is, let's say appoint as opposed to hire. Is that okay? To appoint Barbara Butler as interim select board administrator. Yes. Okay, at my assistant town clerk, assistant treasurer pay rate. Yes. Do I hear a second? I second. Okay. I would like to make a friendly amendment. Barbara, I think we need to also state that you, that we, it, we're ready to contact Wendy and tell her to start to put you on the benefits list. Is that correct? Is that that needs to be part of this? Wait, motion, Wendy. If, I'm, yes. if, if I am now moving this, the pre, I'll fill you in a little bit. Even though I've been working full time for the last couple of years, the previous select board never approved those my hours. So I because they didn't want to pay me benefits. So I've been working full time for the last few years at part time, half time benefits. So that's why we're putting this in the minutes so that Wendy knows to the <coughs> need a full time role so that I can so, so help me so structure my motion, Barbara. Understand. Help me structure my amendment to Gabrielle's motion. It would be something like and that uh, Wendy be notified that you are now on payroll. Something like that. Okay. Okay. Considered, so, a full -time considered a full time employee and eligible for benefits. Okay, so Gabrielle made a motion to appoint Barbara Butler's interim <coughs> select board assist, uh, administrator at her current pay rate, um, and that and 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 and, 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 and added that <coughs> Wendy Wilton at Nimrick be notified that this moves her to full time status with full benefits. Is there a yes. second to my I will, amendment? I will second the amendment. All in favor, oh, sorry, discussion on the amendment. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, now we're, uh, we're back to the, um, the original motion as amended. Discussion on that? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. May I ask who seconded the friendly amendment? Jane. Jane. Jane, thank you. Um, I think we can finish the rest up pretty quickly, even though we're already 10 minutes into the next item, which is Rose has volunteered to be our recording secretary. Rose, you have a problem that you cannot be here at 6 on certain, at, except for certain days. Right, right. I work at the hospital. I work till 6. Um, and so today I got here just shortly after 6.30. Um, so we would, if you choose to appoint me to that, um, we'd have to work out something that I wouldn't be here until about 6.30 or, you know, maybe 6.40 or something like that. I do not, I usually don't work on the fourth Monday of the month because when I work the weekend, I have Monday off. And so I think we're talking about just maybe one meeting a month. Questions? I don't think I've officially met these three people on your select board. Can you tell me your name, please? I'm Anne Tulin. Hi. Hello. Gabrielle Molina. Hi. Hi, uh, Jordan Keyes. Hi, so nice to meet you. You too. Um, I was with the select board for 18 years. I served 11 years as the recording secretary and eight years on the board, and I had an overlap of doing both. Um, so. Pretty 
well versed. My minutes are in the office if you want to see. And you take you took minutes at town meeting also. And yeah, I just did town meeting, mm -hmm. and um, they're almost done. I just need to just do a final read through, and so I'll send them to Barbara, right? And then you'll send them to the board, and then they'll get archived. Questions, discussion. Did you say there's a 48-hour window of because we have to. Does the select board have to post its minutes for you? Five days. Five days. Less I know. Draft minutes. Draft minutes have to be posted within five days. Yeah. Right now it's 10 days um, due to the, there's another law passed, which is similar to last year that gives more flexibility to various boards, um, allowing them to another additional five days. And there's other, um, like, Zoom meeting things that can happen as a result. So I think it's 10 days for the next year. Mark, yeah. Hi, I'm Mark Mahalo. One thing, congratulations everybody, by the way. It's just great to set eyes on you all here. Uh, one thing you should think about, but it's not the kind of thing you have to decide instantly. You can decide it over time, is what do you want your minutes to look like? You know, there's this huge variety. Some organizations and select boards have minutes that are like, you know, motion, the motion, the vote, and that, you know, discussion without any summary, just really short. The advantage of that is it doesn't take so long to get them out and all of that. Other people want them almost like verbatim and anything in between, and it's really up to the select board kind of this working with your clerk to kind of decide, your recording secretary decide what you want. Uh, so I'm glad you brought that up. Um, Barbara does have a model, and we were going to bring it up at their meeting on Sunday. And it's, uh, it is, it's like just what you're talking about. It's a chart, and it's just very simple, and it makes it very easy to take minutes. Mm -hmm. So one possibility would be that one of us would take minutes for 40 minutes while waiting for Rose to arrive. Is this something you would like to decide tonight, or would you like to put table this one, say, until next Sunday, to give us a chance to talk about it and think about it a little more? Um, I'd love to lock in having a note taker. Um, so, you know, I, I can see figuring out the logistics of what we do for the first 40 minutes. Uh, how many months you said? So, so the meetings are the regular meetings are only the second and fourth. Well, Monday. that's something we so have we to decide. So we can move those around. I think it would be it'd be nice that if, if you want to just kind of summarize your your specific limitations, um, so that we can kind of take those into consideration, then we, we might be able to shift things around a little bit. Oh yeah. So you, which is the Monday that you might? The fourth Monday. I wouldn't work, so fourth I wouldn't Monday. have a problem. Okay. okay. Tegan, did you want to say something? Oh, no, it was like before, fourth Monday. Oh, okay. Yes. And I also want to let you know that she has offered to take minutes on your long six-hour work session on Sunday the 19th. Yeah. She's already, already offered to be available to do that for you. All right. Would you, you don't have to decide tonight. Yeah, <laughs> I know. That's what I'm suggesting. Would yeah. Would you all be more comfortable waiting, or are you ready to vote? If we're ready to vote, will somebody make a motion, and then we can see where it goes? Can you take a comment from the audience? Yes, I have yeah. been. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, a big problem in town has been communication from the select board, and I've used Barbara's format before, and it, it's official and it meets all the requirements, but it's not very informative. Yes, and but we have so <laughs> we have the ORCA tapes that you can always go and watch. Well, they, they've always been there, but the, I, I, would, I would appeal for more detailed minutes, uh, always posted in front porch form. The, the agenda for this meeting was really good. Yeah, I think that's another really good way to communicate with your the people who elected you. Um, uh, if you, if you, for some reason, needed to have those skeleton minutes immediately for some legal reason, by 
fine, so be it. But people that can't come to the meeting and want to know what went on are going to be pretty frustrated. There's no, no mention of discussion or who said what. The kind of minutes that Roosevelt was done. But with that, that I, would, uh, I would appeal for the detailed minutes. Marsh? I just have a comment. Are you allowed to, could the person who's doing the minutes also be recorded? Since we're doing the ORCA is a recording that would just be use, useful for them to kind of repeat if they have to go back and hear, they couldn't, didn't hear, or didn't write it, can't read their writing. Um, I just wondered if that's a possibility if they could, if they have these little recording things that could yeah, just be a thing. Yeah, in the past. Scott yeah. used to do that. Far but I mean, now you don't even have to have tapes and all that kind of stuff. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah. I didn't know whether that would be something that would be worthwhile to make. It, you mean just an audio recording? Yeah. It, and what would that would be available to just the person really taking minutes? To help with the minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I just would wonder if the ORCA recording could just be made available to to a note taker sooner than it's made available to the, the general public. I mean, you can buy those little recording things for forty to fifty dollars, and then she doesn't have to rely on someone else's schedule. The town actually owns a very good audio recorder. It's under the counter over there. I don't know if that, it just might make it easier. It's like uh, Donna. Could you vote on having Rose be the recording secretary and have the discussion about the minutes on Sunday? Yeah, yes. that's, I was just <laughs> going to suggest that. Um, uh, would you be willing to vote on Rose now? If so, will somebody please make a motion? Did we, just, did we discuss an hour later or anything? Uh, it, it's in the. It, it's twenty dollars an hour, isn't it? It's in the budget. I believe so. Um, when I started way back when, in two thousand three, it was a thousand dollars a year. Um, and so I'm really not doing this for the money. Twenty dollars an hour is just fine with me, but I'm really not doing it for the money. I'm really not. And so I don't care what you pay me or. <laughs> Did you get your question? You got um, waiting for a motion. I would make a motion that we hire Rose as our recording secretary at twenty dollars an hour. Second. Further discussion. All right. Uh, yes. I, I guess that. Amendment, um, or I guess to recognize a commitment to kind of discussing the minutes um, in the formatting of the minutes in, in greater detail at, at, at our next uh, work session. Um, I, I, don't, I don't need that to be voted on. I'll, yeah. I'll put it in the yeah. agenda. Yeah. <laughs> Who did the second? It was one of you two. It was Gabrielle, I think. Gabrielle, thank you. Okay, further discussion? Just one thought. You know, you really, you really shouldn't rush to absolutely. You, you can, you can change your mind about what the minutes look like. I mean, you might not know how you feel until you see the first set of minutes. Well, they did for eleven years. Yeah. There's a lot of things. So, so yeah. you, might, you might, you know, just don't. I don't think you, know, you can decide. So, on the website. Um, on the website. Yes, Barbara. Yeah, you know, maybe suggest that you were motion, which is rather than use the word hire, appoint her as a security secretary for one year term. Do you accept thank that you as a friendly one? Okay. Yeah. okay, thank you. All right, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, unanimous. Good. So we have our people in place now. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> took us 20 minutes longer than we scheduled for it. Um, I think the people involved, the, 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 there's a whole bunch of things now that we've lumped in for the next huh, 45 minutes, and most of it is just things. You added another bullet to this section? That, yes, I know. Uh, two, actually. The you, roads and the. You added the road to this section that you just finished. Right. Did? Yeah. We, we did, but. We should oh, push that to the end of the Yeah, I, I would like to, uh, since the, I think, are all the Curtis Pond people who want to speak here? I'm just here to be available. Yeah. I think, I think they 
There's nothing left. Yeah. Okay. Coming. I mean, we can we can put it off and do some of these other things, but I thought since you're here, did you do the lister? Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, we'll do the lister. Okay. Lister. Lister. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. We'll do the lister next. That's at the bottom of this seven o'clock item. So you all got in your packet. Um, a memo from Christine Chamberlain Mapping. She has been hired for several years now to um, update the CALIS parcel and data maps that are created by the listers. The, she's asking for $3,500, that money is in the budget. She's also asking 60 an hour for corrections beyond that. That's not in the budget. John, do you want to speak to this or do you just want to take questions? No, there's really not a lot to say. It's uh, having someone like Christine is an absolute necessity. Um, the $60 an hour for consulting beyond what, what she's asked for, that usually comes out to maybe uh, three or four hours uh, um, working with the listers. But uh, she's great. And it goes on. She corrects uh, parcels based on deed descriptions, surveys. It's absolutely essential. It's not, it's not like whether we hire someone or not, it's whether we hire Christine or someone else. She knows the town very well. Mm -hmm. Anybody got any questions for John? She's uh, served in that capacity for us in the past, right? The, the for quite a while. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like 20 years, probably. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So is her addition of sixty dollars an hour for come what may? Is she? Do, are we anticipating that the need for that? We probably anticipate uh, four to eight hours um, in, in a year. There's one time during the year when she'll send us a list, and the listers will do their best to try to rectify errors, find find discrepancies where discrepancies lie. But at some point, we end up in a conference call with Christine, and that might go on for half a day. Other questions? Discussion? Um, if she has asked that we actually sign this, so you all have seen this document, we could sign it tonight. Uh, there's not a hurry, however. We can put it off. So. What is your pleasure? You want to make a motion, somebody? I'll make a motion that we accept this contract as written and we sign it this evening. Can I hear a second? I second. Further discussion? Questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I'm going to um, pass this around. Yeah. I signed one back. And we'll get that to her. Yes, thanks, John. Okay. So, Curtis Pond people, you want us to do something. Would you tell us what it is? Actually, um, I can start. We want you to consider things. We don't want to ask for any particular action tonight. But what we do first want to welcome the select board. The new select board. Uh, the Curtis, I'm Mark Sweeney. Uh, I'm the treasurer. Mark, Mark Mahali is an executive on the executive board. Lini is secretary. Um, Colleen's <laughs> coming. She's the president. And why the Jamie? How can I? I can mean, <laughs> tell I'm having a brain crash here. Is the vice president of the. Curtis, uh, or Curtis, um, Curtis Pond Association. And so what we would like to do tonight is uh, let you know, uh, first of all, I think you're quite aware that we've been working on this for a couple of years, and we had the bond approved by the voters of the town meeting. Um, and what we've been doing with the prior select board was we were pretty much doing all of the work associated with it. We had a couple people assigned to us who were liaisons from the board. Um, and we worked with them to go back to the select board when things were ready for the select board to work on. Um, 
one of our next top priorities is to go out to bid on the construction. We still have a very ambitious goal of doing the construction this summer, and that's due to our concern about the dam. And so um, one of the things that we, in order to go out to bid, would be that we would need to get a bid ready document for the select board. And, and we've been doing this as a co-group. First Pond Association and the select board have been working on it together because we've been providing a lot of funding to do things, but we've been doing everything um, together. Um, so one of the things that we would like to do is, as soon as we can, go out to bid um, for, the, um, for the construction. Um, and what that means is that we would have to have an RFP or a bid notice, um, bid request sent out. And we would need, we would want to work, we would be willing to help put that together and then have the select board, a we present it to the select board and they could sign off on the, on the bid request. We're really, we're ready to do the footwork um, for that. I did, um, I'm gonna, this is for your review, not to make any decisions, but um, we, we did contract um, uh, over a year ago with Du Bois and King as the engineering firm that the town and the Correspondent Association together, we both signed off on a contract with like them to do, to prepare the design, do bid ready document, of, that's like about an inch thick of all the instructions on what they have to do, and also to shepherd the permit applications that we needed. Um, we have six permit applications outstanding right now, which would require, before construction could begin, we would have to have those permit applications um, approved. Uh, two of them, uh, the DEC dam safety permit applications and the Army Corps of Engineer applications, um, would, what we want to do before we actually go out to bed, and what the engineer has asked us, is before we actually went out to bed, we get the comments from the, these two organizations to make sure there weren't any last minute tweaking. But the engineering firm has been working with them to make sure we, they, you know, they, they met what they thought, but actually throwing it out into a review process, there might be some more comments that we might have to adjust. So we want to be able to tweak the last bit of the bid um, ready documents before we actually went out to bed. So we wouldn't be ready to go out to bid for a couple weeks anyways, um, depending on how quickly we can get these last few comments out of the organizations. So I did make a, a these would, this is kind of a generic um, bid uh, format template for, um, oops, sorry, I don't need it. <laughs> This, and these would be the kind of information we would need to have for the, um, for the bid ready, uh, to, for the bid to go out um, to bid. And things like dates and, and, you, um, and who wants, how you would sign. Um, uh, Two Boys and King has put, prepared uh, over a, like a 150 page document on the technical spe specifications and a similar document for the bid, bidding process, what would be our evaluation criteria, uh, what would be probably in a contract. So we have those documents, um, they have readied them and they're 99% complete but they don't want to actually uh, do anything till we get those last comments. So, I just this is more just to kind of prepare you for um, what we're going to need from you to keep on our uh, ambitious deadline. So, um, I'm not really asking anything tonight uh, except 
to be aware of us. <laughs> and Mike's going to add a few things too. So. Um, okay. Well, pretty structured process. And the first step is to issue bid documents. Generally, the better your bid documents are, the more likely you are to get a good bid back because they know what they're getting into and don't do it. Issuing a bid document does not commit the town in any way to the project. Um, then, hopefully, you get maybe even several people interested enough to submit bids. Before they do, you usually have a conference with the bidders. And that's where Du Bois and King, who you have a contract with and it's joint, that's where that's part of their job, is to, is to be involved in that. Because usually the questions about the bid are very specific. They're, they're really, you know, engineer to contractor. And then they go away, and then within a certain period of time, 20 days or whatever, they submit bids. Up to that point, the town is not submitted in any way. Then the town can hear from them or whatever, and let's say you accept a bid. It's beginning to be looking like a commitment at that point, but it isn't really. Where you really are committed is when you enter into a contract with one bidder. When you contract with them to do it, well, then you're committed. And I don't know at this point where, how that process marries with the bond issuance process. I mean, generally speaking, I think you sort of want to have your money lined up before you enter into a bid. But that process that I described is not a quick process. I mean, it can be fairly quick, but it's, you know, has multiple stages. Um, I also just want to say I'm really aware that although some, we know a lot about this because it's been drilled into our heads, and Jamie knows a good bit about it, we really recognize that at least four of you don't. And if you want us to be there on Sunday just to talk about what's happened and what the, you know, a little of the history and how we got here, we're happy to do that in any way you want. I mean, we're, we'll just help you any way you want. We recognize that this is new to you and that you have a lot on your plate besides this. If, if it's possible without, we don't want to rush this and make stupid mistakes. So, you know, that's important. You know, sometimes if you do things too fast, it really doesn't work out. But we don't, on the other hand, want to just sit and twiddle our thumbs and then there's a big storm in the winter and the van goes down. So, that's why we are just sort of would like to move ahead. What's the word with all deliberate speed? And I guess we're certainly ready to answer any questions that you might have tonight, but you got a lot to do tonight. Hey, I did want to make one more comment. One of the things that we will need to have in place is a lot of legal documents that say it's okay for us to do construction. For, uh, in temporarily to do construction and go over people's land. So we have some legal documents that we're going to have to get. We've also talked about getting a quick claim for anyone who might have any uh, chance that they owned the dam that they quick claim their, uh, their uh, potential ownership away. So, I mean, there's a lot of legal documents that need to be and so that's something we're going to want to pursue quicker rather than, you know, that would have to be, probably have to, would it have to be in place before we did a contract? Pretty, yes, pretty but anyway, pretty there's a lot of stuff that still needs to be done. I mean, it can be, that's, that's good. And I do want to emphasize that we are here to do whatever we need to, you know, whatever we can to help. And then we're not dumping it on, on you guys. However you want us to work. So we're happy to do that. So the bid is issued by the select board rather than by the Curtis Palm Association? You know, I think so, because it could be jointly issued. I mean, part of what you have to work out, and I, this is the kind of thing you, you guys want to talk to Joe, and you really want to talk through, is what's the form of our relationship? Personally, I would like it to be a public-private partnership. 
I think that that's perfectly doable. And it just figure that out. But the town, at least, would have to, because in the end of the process, it's the town using the bond money and our money, which we do. See, we can turn over our money to you, but you can't turn over your bond money to us. So I think that since it's the town's bond money, in the end, it's the town that will contract with the contractor. Whether we jointly do, we could jointly do it because it's our joint money, but the contractor ain't gonna care. Yeah, as long as they know the money's there. So the partnership aspect is the nonprofit doing the heavy lifting of the content, and we still have to, um, and and the select board has a lawyer, and the nonprofit has a lawyer. We could share a lawyer. We can share a lawyer. I've spent a lifetime working in my prior existence, in my prior life, doing public-private partnership work. Where, let's say, I was representing a city office of developer on developing a whole piece of land, and very often. We would each have our own lawyers and then we would jointly have a lawyer and work together or jointly have experts work together. You know, there's always the potential for conflict, but there's such an advantage to working together that it sometimes outweighs that. But that's the kind of thing you guys have to think through and talk to Joe or whatever, satisfy yourselves how you want to do it. Can I just say for a minute, I, I, we do definitely need to schedule some time to really mm -hmm. dig into this. Um, we're planning on Sunday to do um, budget financial issues and roads. Cool. If we have a little, once we start talking about the agenda, we'll see if we can get some time in for uh, Curtis Pond. You know, you can, we can do it over time too. It but we, yeah, so I guess one question I would have for you is, is there anything we need to know from you, say, before the 27th? Well, the only thing would be is if we thought we could get all of our thoughts together and do and vote on the release. But I don't think that's going to happen on our end because I don't think we're going to. I mean, maybe I'm being pessimistic, but I don't think we're going to have all the comments from the permit people okay. to be able to have the bid ready documents. So it's, it's conceivable that we could get comments back very quickly and give you. Uh, uh, the request for proposal. Um, I do think it would be good if you figured it out because I can't remember exactly. Is there are there special rules for the town over like where you publish, you know, stuff like that. But but I think she's right. I think it's unlikely. Yeah, that was one of the things I came down today to the. Um, and asked if there were some, if Palace has special rules for issuing RFPs, does it need to advertise in certain places? Who have to be notified? Do you guys have a, already a procedure for doing that? And uh, at this, you know, first day for Tegan, I don't think. <laughs> we'll find but out. we're just going to, but we're going to try to find that out too. We'll find it out. You know, yeah, we can find it out. Yeah. Okay. Do we? Are you well, I could kind of answer that a little bit. Oh, go ahead. Um, in your organizational meeting, and I wasn't here for the beginning of it, but you, you um, decide where you're going to legally post your agendas and everything. So that would go along with where you would legally post that. And I know prior select boards have said our official stuff goes in the Times, our Vista Harvest is that front porch forum, and then the general stores, but something so complex as an RFP for a dam, um, you know, I think it, the RFP could, you know, you write for an RFP, it's kind of, um, documents are available at the town clerk's office. Um, and then, personally, putting together an RFP, I think Du Bois and King needs to do that. Yeah. They've they already do. done it. Yeah. They have already done it, and they provided it to us, but they don't know the specifics for Cal. They, they, then it was part of their contract, and they've done 99% of the work. It's 90, yeah. Let, let me give the board a chance now to ask questions of these guys. So April 28th is aspirational, or just impossible? That was just a, it was a day. Did March 28th? No, April 28th. Yeah, yeah it's, on like it's the due date of the bids. Of the bids back. Yeah, I mean, that's just there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All the highlighted things would need to be concluded, and actually, the whole thing could be different. But this is kind of what Du Bois and King has done in the past, and they did like a generic template, and those would be the, some of the key information that 
we have to decide on. We get a list of contractors from Du Bois King. Like, let's say it could be as small as three. And send it, and literally send it out to them, too. Oh, well, we got that someday. Yeah. We actually, we have, we have the, three, uh, well, four. Four contractors. Okay. Including Larry. That the four, there were four contractors that Jeff Tucker, who's been our engineer on, on this project, gave us that we were qualified for getting, that would be like a start of who you could notify. And he did, Jeff said that we could let, let the contractors know now that we're doing this soon, and, but what we can't do is give them any of the details, the technical details or any of the contract and bidding procedure details ahead of time that could disqualify the the uh, contractor. So we have to be careful with the details, but we um, we could start letting the contractors know now who that you know we're hoping to do it this summer. Other questions from the board? Uh, A million, right? Well, <laughs> not quite sure how to form it quite yet, but. Um, It may be worthwhile, <clears throat> uh, having gone through a similar process for another nonprofit, um, in the advertisement uh, to require an application that states the contractors. Uh, I, I mean, I think it's important to advertise and open bid and, and invite other contractors. I think it's great that there's a short list of contractors, as there usually is. Um, but we're talking about public funds, and uh, yeah. there's no harm in advertising. And that's and that's what we're trying to find out. What, um, the what you want mm -hmm. for procedures? We want to do it how you want to do it. I, I by the way agree with you because the last thing you want is somebody coming out of left field asserting that they were excluded. Right. Correct. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know it, it is within both. All interested parties' interest to, um, uh, to to make sure that there are qualifiers that are added to that. Um, and yeah, I, I would like to kind of see us working towards that. It'd be nice to spend some time getting a little bit more uh, information and familiar with uh, with the plan um, and the, and the relationship with uh, with Du Bois and, and King and the document that they've prepared. It's great to know that that's, that's in, in place. Uh, the rest of it can happen pretty pretty quickly. Um, and they expressed an interest in meeting with whomever <coughs> to, to find out what Callis's procedures are. They, they did everything in a generic, you know, they've had a, done a lot of municipalities, our case, so they did it in, in a generic way now, but they need to know specifically what what, one, of the, one of the things you guys should think about, and again, it's just up to you how you handle it, whether you want to designate a couple of your members to be kind of like point people on this, because it can be a little time consuming and some people have to be mastering it, you know, master it to the point where you feel like, you know, it's not like we're the only ones who have all this information. So you can have a committee. I wouldn't have three people on the committee because you guys <laughs> I want to ask, I, I know I came in late, and did you talk about the informal yes. request for, because that would address your concern. I thought it was a great idea to put out a really quick, informal, who's interested. Or just kind of, we're doing this. Yeah, I mean, if you've yeah. already discussed it, I don't want to waste your time, no, but I, I think we should put it, it was proposed to us that we do an immediate, informal, very informal, in the Times Argus, everywhere you ever publish. Where do we want to do this? Is anyone interested? And it's not that formal, you're going to get the 700 page plan and the $75 fee it takes to get those plans. Just a heads up. Mm -hmm. And it addresses your concern about what little guys out there might be interested that could do it for half the, or well, I'm putting words in your mouth, but yeah, you want to get it out there where everybody knows about this what, before the formal thing happens. What we, 
when it came in, what we did is, what she's talking about is the, the request for a statement of interest. It's a sort of pre-bid stage where you, the town issues a request, or like the East Dallas store could have done it, any, like you said, a nonprofit. It's just a request for interest, a statement of interest. Um, we were a little concerned that maybe you weren't ready to do that right now, so. Yeah, I, I think that it would be a little premature from my, from my perspective, a little premature um, to, to do that. I, I, um, I certainly appreciate the, the efficiency of, of doing that just to kind of get folks, you know, pre, pre-warned. But I, I think one of the important parts of this is like managing expectations and then because we're taking a lot of really big bites out of a lot of business, uh, just trying to make sure that we are directing interest to the right person um, so that uh, we don't lose lose track of anybody's interest. But but also, you know, I think it can be a, a, a valuable process to just kind of put it in a box. You've announced it. You've, you've publicized a, a, a process that you're going to be going through um, to kind of establish a pool of interested uh, parties who will then, at that point, be locked in for consideration moving forward. And then you don't have folks coming in uh, later or at different times of the process and, and, and reopening uh, the conversation or, or feeling like they were in, excluded. Um, I, I think what Mark said was, you know, we are trying yeah, to figure yeah. out what you guys feel comfortable yeah. with. Because one thing you do have to go back and speak to your legal counsel about signing these things and feeling comfortable. There's a lot that has to be considered by you guys. Um, and we are sympathetic to how much that is and want to help you as much as we can. But my question, you said using the term locked in about this informal. There's nothing locked in about it. No, no, he's just referring to the whole process. Okay. His, concern was that, his concern was that we have to be careful to make sure that we broadly open up the Well, that's process. what I mean. Yeah. But that can happen either, right. either way. Yeah, yeah. And I, yeah I just want to be, when we do that, I think it would be wise to to, to define what that process is in, you know, in advance and be prepared to uh, engage with, with people. I wouldn't want to rush into an informal um, announcement that then, uh, that then opens up a, a bunch of communication that we're not really prepared to handle um, and, and questions that we're not prepared to answer. Uh, because in this process, and it's just these types of projects, it's just really important to be explicit about expectations, and uh, and that's where you know a Du Bois and King is invaluable because they do this stuff all the time, um, and uh, they they know how to be consistent in their communications. You want to make sure that you're giving the same answer to to anybody who's asking the same yeah. questions. And yeah. If we did one of these <clears throat> informal things, you know that our going to be calling to Boyce and King, and they're not allowed to say anything at this right. point. It, okay. Okay, yeah. guys, I think we're, you we're yeah. way off schedule yeah. now. Yeah. And so we clearly need to schedule a, a really big chunk of time to just talk to you. Um, are there any more questions that you'd like to know, things you'd like to know right now? Can't wait for a deeper discussion. Okay. Um, I, I just want to ask a quick one. The permits, my understanding was you needed the select board to sign some of these permit applications. Do we need to do that right now? No. Okay. We, what we did, because the timing, we wanted to get the permit applications in. We have signed them as from the CPA. Okay. Except so, for the main permit. Right, except for the Dan safety permit from the right. Department of Environmental Conservation. That one, the town, and I'll have to track down on when, we'll, we'll talk about when we need to have you guys sign on to the application. Okay. I think we'd probably better schedule a little bit of time, at least for you Sunday. on Sunday, to, to come back to this. Okay. I don't think it'll be the deep dive that we'd yeah. like to do, but we can at least do it's, a little it's more. It's better to do it in pieces. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We, we learned it in pieces. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. All right. I'd like to move on then, unless anybody's... Got anything burning here? Thanks. Uh, oh, geez, we've done. We've hardly done any of the administrative stuff. Let's at least try to set times and for regular meetings.
Do you guys want to keep meeting on the um, first and fourth Mondays? Uh, what's second. the second and fourth Mondays? Yeah. At six o'clock. Yeah. Is that okay with everybody? Did we? I, I'd be curious, Rose's schedule. Are you? Do you work? By what days of the week do you work? Like, if we did Tuesday instead of Monday, would that be better Most for you? Most Thursdays, I don't work. Okay. Thursday is pretty good that, that I don't work. Yeah. 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 Like East Montpelier meets on the first and the third. Callis met on the second and the fourth. Um, you know, if you don't think it's going to be too much of a hardship, someone to fill in for half an hour, forty-five minutes till I get here. Yeah, just about Thursdays. There's a meeting on the second Thursday. Right. Yeah, I can't do Thursdays anyway. Yeah, I was just curious. Okay. Like yeah. Okay. Shall we do that then? Do we have to move that? Can we just say it? <laughs> yeah, you just. Posting, you know, you yeah. just verbalize that, that you're going to meet yeah. here at one hour, well, and then you also have to say where your um, your public postings are going to be. Right. Uh, we've got to we've got to finalize our rules of procedure, but I'd like to table that until um, Sunday. All right. And, and by the way, I do want to say one thing: we cannot do group business by group agendas, but you could send your comments on the rules of procedure to me. I can compile them all into one document. And then we could use that on Sunday to work from, and I think it would save a lot of time if you'd be willing to do that. All right, can you all get to the rules of procedure that I sent you? Okay. So if you wouldn't want to do that, Gabrielle's already done it, and if the rest of you would do it, that would be great. Um, and I do need to resign. I need to formally resign as uh, my other two jobs. And I sent you a, a sample posting. Which, uh, but the, uh, what I'd like to do is post it in front of Porch Forum and tell people to, to give us a statement of interest um, by March 23rd, and then we'll deal with it on March 27th. So what I would like you to do is accept my resignation mm -hmm. and to authorize our new select board administrator to post this or something like it in the uh, front porch forum. Uh, I'll make a motion to accept that. Second. Okay. Discussion? Who was the second? Me. Sorry. Okay. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Okay. Is the uh, 911 coordinator, is that like a, like, let's get one super duper, is it as kind of important as it sounds? Oh, yeah. They, <laughs> they, they, they come in. I, I usually, let, for several years, I've had nothing in the winter. I've been... I've been getting them about one a week all winter. It's been kind of amazing. So, yeah, we do need to get somebody on board. It's not hard to do, it's just somebody, you just play with the maps a little bit and you go out and you measure things. So would you remain on oh, yes. until we have- I'm sorry, I do need to say that. I'd like my DRB resignation to be effective immediately. And I would, because they're fine without me. And I would like my 911 coordinator to be effective upon appointment of a successor. You could add that to the motion. I think we voted on it. Um, we've got to appoint people to sign checks. These are payroll checks, all kinds of accounts payable, which I'm going to give you in a sec. Right now, usually you have the treasurer authorized, um, the town clerk, and a member of the select board. The treasurer does most of them, but if there's a problem, then there are two other people available to do it. We need to remove the current authorized signatures. It's easy to do, Barbara will walk us through it. And I would like a motion to, well, first of all, we need to talk about which of us would like to be the backup. And then I would like a motion to appoint Tegan, Sandra, and the select board member to be, to be authorized, and then Barbara will take care of it. Any discussion on that? Can it be electronic? No. We're not currently set up for that. That could be something you could discuss with the new treasurer at a later date, but we're not currently set up for that. Who wants to do this? 
May, may I please? It's very rare. It would be when the treasurer is completely unavailable and the town clerk is completely unavailable. Um, during the years that we had a town clerk and a treasurer, you were never called on. Select board was never called on. We've had to call on a select board member the last couple, uh, over the last year, maybe twice, because Jeremy was out of the office. Yes. Um, but yeah. this, our treasurer will be remote, working remotely. I wonder if that'll change. She will, be, she will still, during the years, two and a half years that she worked remotely during COVID, she did all checks. So, so this would be very rare. And, and there's only one signer on the checks. We don't need two signatures. We just are looking for backup. Seeing as I work right in Maple Corner and I'm usually right around here, I would be willing to do that and run down the hill when needed. I don't have a strong opinion one way or the other, but I would yeah. be willing to. <laughs> I, I think that uh, uh, delegation is important, but I think some things it's just good to uh, to have a member of the select board perform it. Um, and if uh, Jamie is comfortable with uh, providing that backup uh, second to the treasurer, I think that's uh, something worth. Will you put that in the form of a motion, please? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. It, it's a, a backup to a signatory. No, no, we need to, we need to, I, I, but the motion needs to authorize the town clerk, right. the treasurer, yeah. and Jamie on behalf of the select board to be authorized to sign and to remove the current authorized signa signatory, signatories? Signatories. No, signatories. Uh, I would make motion to uh, remove uh, the current uh, signatories, uh, authorized signatories, uh, from Community Bank, Community Bank uh, and the uh, recently appointed uh, treasurer, um, town clerk, and uh, Jamie Morby as the uh, backup signatories, authorized signatories. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Uh, this is a little awkward, but these are all the bills that have to be paid. Barbara has put this together. It's a whole packet of the bills um, from you know the uniforms for the the road crew guys to paychecks for Barbara. Um, and the way they've always done this is we pass them around while we're in meetings, and then we sign here. And that you'll see there's several packets and we have to sign each one. Jamie and I have already done it because we were in the town office today. I got to pass these around and ask you guys to sign this. <laughs> what? Don't we technically need just three? We technically need only three. So I'm going to hand them over to you and I'm sorry to do this while we're trying to do other business. I think that's something we need to talk about if we want to keep doing it that way or not. Right. We get we got big stamps. It's not, the, it's not the act of signing I'm worried about. Yes. <laughs> okay. Can we combine them in three? Yes, I just want to correct that. Yeah. Actually, Wendy did all that. That's the treasurer's job, does all of this. So Wendy prepared all those packets, and the auditors need to see three live signatures. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, and, and it'll be Sandra who will fix these in the future, right? It'll yes, be Sandra will do this yeah. in the future. Okay. Oh, golly. Um, okay. Bill Lefebvre, I think, is next up. There was an accident, what, about two weeks ago, one of the town trucks um, in a very narrow point of the road. They both stopped. The town truck tried to go by. They hit the, uh, this person hit Bill Lefebvre's vehicle and did damage. Bill Lefebvre has gone, to, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly, has gone down, there's, a, there's an email that looks like this from our insurance company. Denise filed the claim with our insurance company, which is Passive, the municipal insurance company, as Pam, who is apparently uh, the one who's on this case, says in this email, we are a consent coverage group, and that means she makes a recommendation, as she has in this email, that we pay this. We've got $1,000 deductible, so this will come out of our budget. The amount that in the um, uh, that uh, Bill got in his uh, 
the review, is $512.80. So Pam needs us to just say yes and we for the nine minutes that we did this. And then Barbara will let her know. Discussion? Questions? You made a motion. Yes. to um, give permission to Barbara to contact PASSIF and approve this expenditure. Second. Second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I'm sorry, who was the second? <laughs> Jordan. Okay. Um, next up is talking about document sharing, and at 8 o'clock we're supposed to, uh, Joe will stand by to talk to us about the, um, the uh, a horse issue. Jordan, can we actually do, the, do a 15 minute discussion on this, or is it really a much longer discussion? It's actually, it needs to be a very brief discussion, I think. Okay, uh, why, don't you, why don't you do it then? Go ahead. <coughs> Uh, so I've been trying to uh, wrap my head around uh, some improvements um, and standardizations that we can um, uh, implement uh, regarding email um, and other forms of communication. Um, uh, it's hard to do that without being, without having been appointed or uh, assigned any responsibility to do so. Um, so if uh, everyone is uh, comfortable with me continuing to uh, beat the bushes a little bit um, to get better information, I'm, I'm already down the road and kind of evaluating some options. I'd like to bring those back for consideration, uh, as well as uh, reach out to RB Technologies um, uh, and get a better idea of, of the services that they provide for for the town, um, and which may be built upon to uh, to kind of improve and centralize communications for, for us as a as a board, as well as other uh, other town employees and, and maybe other uh, committees um, as well. Um, so so basically, it's looking at like uh, procuring Gmail. Uh, locally administered Gmail accounts uh, that are assigned to uh, the town's domain um, that will come with a suite of other resources. Um, Outlook has a similar um, uh, service that they provide. Um, we could bring it in-house. There, there are a couple of ways that we could, uh, that we could go about it. Um, the costs are all pretty competitive. Um, it will likely come down to what our personal preferences are um, and uh, another consult that we would receive from, from RB and other folks who are familiar with it. But um, I'm leaning towards a, a Gmail option. Um, I've used Outlook uh, before, uh, but um, Microsoft has, has made it so that it's uh, very easy to share documents uh, unintentionally. Uh, in some ways it's very intuitive, and in other ways that, that very intuitive operation kind of makes it messy, uh, especially if other folks are using it on the, uh, on the personal side. Um, so the Gmail makes it a little easier to kind of segregate all of that. Uh, and then we would have to uh, decide uh, how that gets administered um, uh, so that there's probably not somebody from the select board who is uh, doing all of the centralized administration and permissions for access and that sort of thing. Um, but we can kind of work all, work through that more when there's greater detail. Uh, and the idea is that uh, we could probably move pretty quickly on, uh, on that, certainly want to. Um, I would think that we would want to try to move as quickly as possible so that we can kind of minimize the use of either uh, personal emails or uh, establishing temporary uh, temporary emails or holdover emails um, to kind of get us through that. Questions for Jordan? So 
we're talking about at, at calusvt.org mm -hmm. or something like that? Exactly. Okay. Uh, so right now, uh, all of the Gmail accounts that are used for various roles and, and positions within the town um, are are more generic and individual. They're similar to what would be set up on the personal level. Um, uh, it, the, the downside is that the, the permissions for each of those is um, uh, is administered locally uh, within those accounts. Um, and uh, for security reasons and uh, continuity reasons, it's just, it's, it's much better practice to have that uh, centralized um, through a more global uh, administrative uh, privilege. Um, and that would also include um, <clears throat> sharing restrictions um, and access restrictions for any kind of shared drive, um, whether we choose to use the shared drive resources that would come with each one of, with, with the new account, basically. Um, yeah, like, are folks familiar with, with how that gets administered? I, uh, I inherited an email account that is 98% full, and I'm willing to go in there and start deleting things, but will you keep me posted on whether or not I will have more storage space for my clerk's email? Uh, is the <clears throat> inbox full, or is the, oof, it's probably everything. It's, there's like three pictures on there, I think it's, and there's not too many documents in there, I don't think. I think it's mostly emails from forever. Let me look, <laughs> let me look into that uh, specifically, just to see if there's a way to export it. And we, we have an obligation to, well, anybody, anybody who serves uh, has an obligation to keep um, records for I believe seven years. Um, yeah. It's either five or seven years. Um, and I wasn't going to delete willy nilly. I'd have to get in there and dig, but I was just wondering how. No, I think there, I think there's a way that you'd be able to uh, do like a mass export and create like an I archive, and then it would be safe um, to to delete them uh, from the local storage and then free up that space. Um, another advantage for paying for the services. And centralizing it, it comes with much greater storage capacity for all of that. Um, and most of these service providers have particular products and, and resources that are available for nonprofits and, and municipalities. So there are other municipalities that are that are using these things. Um, do you know what East Montpelier is using? Uh, I do not. No, my my next one of my next steps was probably going to be to reach out to. Uh, um, uh, VLTC and ask uh, what kind of best practices uh, need to be considered. Um, uh, <clears throat> my initial kind of digging around and, and kind of bird dogging on the subject is, you know, figure out whatever works for you um, and, and try to right size it to the best of your ability. Um, most of them are fairly uniformly secure. And, and frankly, the central administration of, of the accounts, like manage um, a in my day job uh, as the administrator, administrator of that account um, I get warnings of phishing uh, emails that come in uh, it automatically filters that uh, that kind of information out um, and there are much better protections for kind of flagging those types of uh, things that could be security issues that you may not necessarily have eyes on if it's just a, a more generic account, for instance. Can I just, I just need to stop here for a sec. Joe asked me to text him about 10 minutes before we were ready for him, and I just tried to do it, and there's no service. Can anybody text? Uh, I'm on Wi-Fi, so on wi -Fi. I should be able to. Oh, I should have gotten on Wi-Fi. Do you have his number? I don't. Uh, I text him. Oh, thank you, John. Yeah. Okay, John's doing it. Just so you're saying at 820? Just tell him about 10 minutes and then we'll text him again when we're ready. He knows that was our deal. So uh, I apologize for texting while you were talking, but, or for trying to text. Uh, back to Jordan, to this discussion. Anybody have anything they want to talk about uh, on this talk? I guess one thing that we talked about a little bit is my big thought here is that we do want to keep moving forward with this briskly. Mm -hmm. I have a little concern about not having 
publicized ways for people in town to contact us uh, for too long. So I'm wondering if, do you think you'll be able to like have a proposal for um, Sunday or for the following Monday? Uh, I think certainly by Sunday, a lot of that will come into kind of, we may be in a good position to take action on Sunday and, and, and setting up the actual accounts, at least on the Gmail side, uh, it takes a couple of hours, um, as long as you have um, all the right connections and information to make those connections. So um, not too concerned about that. Uh, there is, I think, some discussion to be had around um, how many accounts, uh, how, we, how we set them up, um, and who has the right to, uh, to administer uh, some of those accounts, um, so that we have a comprehensive list, um, because that's also going to influence the cost of any of those uh, implementations. Um, yeah, so I, I think we could. In the interim, I do think uh, it would be worth putting together a, uh, a more generic um, uh, either form on the website under the select board's main landing page or to create a holdover account just for contacting the select board that would likely go to Anne or making Anne's email address uh, uh, available, which I probably... No, I think we could, Barbara can handle that. We could set something up for Barbara. They could go to her, to you, right, Barbara? And then you could funnel them to the right people. Yeah, uh, I'd rather them not go to my yeah. assistant telephone <clears throat> email address if we could set up a select board administrator email address. I think it would be helpful to make it kind of similar to uh, the previous board's email so that there's a little bit of continuity so that people are familiar with kind of the format and how those emails were structured. What I don't know, um, and maybe Johnny can speak to this, I don't know if, was there ever a, a more generic select board email that was created that was like a Calis BT, just, just select board at gmail.com? No. Um, so that's kind of what I had in mind, setting something like that specifically up that we then put you know, on the website immediately with uh, right now the landing page for the select board has a preamble of you know, how to get in touch with us and what types of things to get in touch with us about. Um, so I think we modify that as soon as possible on, uh, on the website with that email address um, uh, so that folks feel like they can reach out to us um, and then probably have that go to Anne, I mean, we could have it forward. We want to be careful as like how that gets distributed, so for open meeting laws uh, purposes, but um, that should probably go to somebody and then that information can get filtered out and distributed from there. But it would be its own email address that somebody would have to like log into and check. So at the moment on the website, it lists all your names as the select board and it says, uh, it, 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 in direct contact with them will be posted once assigned or something like that. And I have my my current <coughs> assistant telephone email address is the only email address on the select board page at the moment. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you for clarifying. Yeah, um, so the question is, could we just give Barbara a, a select board administrator email address instead of them all coming to me? Because she can then say, oh, these go to the town clerk and not bother us with them. And these go to the road crew or whatever, sure. and, and forward the ones that we should get to us until we get a more permanent system in place. Oh, sorry. Just you brought up the formatting until you get to the more formal system. What we used was CALS SB and then the select board members first. You could use CALS SB admin yeah. at Gmail mm -hmm. as a first step, and then you could decide. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping it's, a, it's, a, it's something that we can kind of move past pretty quickly. And I, I also really think that there's all, <laughs> there's all kinds of things that to consider. <clears throat> Posting phone numbers and, uh, and email addresses on websites, there are very automated systems that can crawl websites automatically and, and pull those things and use them for spamming. And so part of what I really want to kind of get a sense of is like how how much of the volume of emails, so like what, what's our exposure to spam, whether or not those, those email accounts, when they are posted, are getting picked up and spammed. Uh, and we 
when you head spam. Yeah. <laughs> so it would be nice to make sure that we're maintaining um, uh, accessibility um, and, and maintaining expectations of accessibility, but not like going above and beyond to the extent that we open ourselves up too broadly to um, uh, to other kind of spam. And one of the things uh, I think that I'll end with is um, uh, phone phone numbers. I think would fall into that. Uh, this the makeup of this board has uh, folks with uh, cell phone number preferences um, and cell phone numbers that are also out of state numbers. And anybody who's uh, using a landline to call from uh, from Calus may be subject to long distance fees for contacting us uh, by those. And those are our personal cell phone numbers. So depending on who we have for a phone service uh, as a town, we may very inexpensively be able to set up kind of alias numbers um, that are local um, so that folks in the town wouldn't be subject to uh, long distance fees. Uh, also adds kind of that, that local feel. Um, and then those can be likely just pushed automatically to our phones um, without going through any extra steps or rings or anything like the that. The phone numbers aren't posted currently, are they? Previously, they were posted with uh, individual email addresses for individual select board numbers and, uh, and their preferred uh, uh, phone number. Um, I don't, I'm not familiar what our obligation is uh, to, to actually post those things. Um, we are those, those, Yeah, so I'm proposing that maybe we, we strike, strike a, a balance um, and, uh, and just kind of put together some thoughts about how we'd like to funnel those inquiries and how we might be able to limit the amount of exposure to spam and that sort of thing. Um, as well as like standardize how those uh, email accounts are set up for some of the subcommittees um, and, and provide resources at the subcommittee level uh, that can be utilized uh, in a more centralized fashion. So the question is then, what are we going to do for the next week? <clears throat> uh, for the next week, I think I'll look into creating an account that will go to, that I'll provide Barbara with uh, uh, access to, um, and then we'll probably re-edit the select board page, uh, saying that we're working on more long-term and sustainable. Okay. So I can put together the verbiage for that. Um, and we'll try to get that on the website as, as soon as possible with the updated info. And, and either Barbara or I can post that. Okay, great. So your conversation started with, I believe, asking for a motion to appoint you as the select board representative doing all this work. Is yeah. that correct? I don't know that I need to be appointed, but I think it'd be worth uh, uh, Authorized. authorizing me to uh, I, I'm not going to be taking any action on behalf of the board. I just need uh, to, I guess, just be recognized as kind of a, a point person on the project so I can reach out to RB and... and okay. um, Would somebody like to make a motion? I move that we authorize Jordan to represent the select board in setting up emails and um, cybersecurity... Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> emails and document sharing system. Oh, that's <laughs> Wherever you got that. I think so. Do we have okay, so Gabrielle is making a motion to authorize Jeremy Keys to represent Jordan. the select. Starting with the J's. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> Jordan Keys to represent the County Select Board to serve, uh, to set up emails and document sharing <coughs> systems. Okay. Second? A second. Okay. Discussion? Anybody? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then we, this discussion will be continued on Sunday. <laughs> Is there, am I, are we ready to move on? Great. Thank you, Jordan. Sure. And good work. And that, um, the next thing we need to do is talk to, um, talk to our attorney about the ongoing, um, uh, Court issues with the horse horses running in Calus. You have received several documents 
The, and just to recap, there has been, we, we impounded the horses, we took, we, uh, took the, uh, the owner to court, the judge issued a decision um, which authorized us to establish remedial um, items that, the, that she had to do before she could get her horses back. Joe did such a thing, and now um, the, her, she is contesting our authority to set up the exact remedial um, requirements that we did. Is that fair, John? That's a, a very short summary. Joe is standing by to talk to us. We need to have a discussion about it. He needs us to authorize him by the 21st to respond to that. If we decide we want to talk about content, then I guess we'd better go into the executive session. If we're willing to just talk about it in broad strokes, we can just talk to Joe at that level. I asked John to come because John's been the liaison so far on this. And we need to discuss whether we would like him to continue in that role or whether one of us might like to take over. But in any case, I think he can serve as a valuable resource to us. So with that, are we ready to call Joe? Uh, John, did you just? I think they were. I think I might have missed. I was a little unclear reading kind of through the, the content about about where we are. It seems like uh, we were uh, the court decided in our favor in part to um, uh, to issue uh, kind of remedial action or take remedial action. Uh, request remedial action, um, and we're now in an appeal process. The uh, horses are still impounded, and there are still costs accruing associated with that. And, and, um, yeah. Um, so, the, the, so by the way, just FYI, the locations of the horses, there are two locations, have been kept confidential with the agreement of the court mm -hmm. for reasons that probably we could discuss in executive session. I would strongly encourage you to do that in executive session so you have the freedom to have mm -hmm. an open conversation with the attorney. Um, but generally, uh, Joe needed, I thought he filed the the um, response to the appeal. No, he has not. He, he, has not, not he needs us to authorize him tonight. Okay. Oh, okay, because to I, I, I worked on that with him. Um, oh, okay. And, um, but, just so you know, the remedial actions, if you will, um, they did call them remedial actions, or they used the term remedial anyway, um, involved uh, a shelter structure, fencing, and it's not like you're fencing cattle because there's a stallion involved. That's a whole different ball of wax. And the, the town has, on an ongoing basis, engaged a highly competent Vet that is, you know, steeped in horse veterinary care, um, and in with regard to the remedial fencing and sheltering and water and all that, it was all vetted with the state veterinarian at the Agency of Agriculture. So I, I don't know how much the attorney for the uh, defendant, if you will, um, knows at um, regard knows about. Who, that we checked in with the state agency of agriculture. I think they think some of our, our approaches were in the extreme. Mm -hmm. um, so. Okay. Can we go ahead and call Joe now? Or are you all ready for that? And then John, uh, I mean, well, I'll, yes. It is a sensitive topic. I don't know if it's appropriate to talk to the attorney about this without. Well, uh, he, he just wants, wants right now to just bring us up to speed and ask for the authorization. As I said, okay. if we get into any content, okay. if, and, if, and you guys can decide, we can, we can just say, Joe, go and do it. Okay. We authorize you, or we can go into executive session and we can talk content, and then, yeah, we need to do that privately. Okay? Okay. Are you comfortable with that? Otherwise, we can go into executive session now. But I, would, I, would, I would propose that we can uh, take any uh, action in, in executive session. So I, I would propose, I guess, that we uh, go into executive session to have a conversation with the show in the event any, any of that content comes up in you know, the conversation. Um, but um, okay. leave it at that. Are you comfortable?
starting the discussion outside of executive session? Yes. Okay. Can you? discussion, John Brabant, as you know, is here. We started a little bit of a discussion and we're all feeling like we've kind of got what's going on. Uh, okay. So would you just tell us what you would like from us now, what you need I us will. to do? First, uh, nice to meet everyone by phone. Um, thank you for taking the time. I know you've had a long meeting. Um, and thanks for uh, reviewing the background on this uh, town versus shed matter. Um, as, as, as you may have uh, already been aware, uh, the town has been involved in some ongoing litigation and has uh, most recently um, provided to Ms. Shedd's attorney a um, notice directing uh, what remedial actions uh, she needs to take in order to uh, have the horses returned to her. Um, we provided that notice to her on January 18th, and uh, about 30 days later, her lawyer filed a motion with the court asking the court to uh, review uh, the notice that we have provided and arguing that certain of the direction that we, certain of the directions that we've given her were beyond the scope of our authority under uh, the ordinance of the court's order. So we are now in a position where we need to respond to that. Uh, the response is due a week from tomorrow uh, on the 21st. And uh, since uh, everyone on the board is uh, new to this matter, I didn't want to presume uh, what I should do. I thought I should get um, uh, confirmation that the board, in fact, wants me to file a response and uh, sort of continue along the course of action that the town has been pursuing thus far. Okay, questions for Joe at this point? Okay, do you guys want to talk? Uh, Joe, should we, do you recommend that we talk about the content and go, go into executive session and talk about content or can we just authorize you to go for it? You can authorize me uh, to proceed, I have, um, based on my prior understanding, I had already begun to outline a response, and uh, I am hopeful that I will have um, a draft available for any board members who want to review it uh, by the end of this week, and uh, I can email that to the board. I would only ask that if any board members have comments, that they contact me directly. Uh, so that we don't inadvertently have a, a meeting by email. Uh, and certainly open to answering any questions, responding to any comments that anyone might have. Uh, but really what we're trying to do at this point is just uh, have the court um, either rule that uh, this motion that's been filed by Ms. Shedd is uh, effectively out of, order, out of order at this time, uh, or uh, direct that she needs to comply with uh, the terms of the notice of remedial action. And um, uh, so I don't know that, unless, unless board members have questions, I don't know that um, I really need much more than just uh, confirmation that I have the authority to go forward and prepare to respond and uh, ultimately get it by. Questions? Questions? Okay. 
Clarifications? Not open session questions. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, the only comment would be, I think it, it's very appropriate to proceed with a with a response. We're, we're kind of in, a, in an area that requires clarification and, uh, and an issue that, that needs closure. Um, and we need to continue to follow this process um, and uh, the, a response seems like a very natural uh, next step. Um, you know. uh, so yes, I understand, and, and I agree. Uh, like I said, I just didn't want to presume anything until I had an opportunity to speak with all of you. Anybody else? Would anybody want to go into executive session to discuss things that we should not do in open session? Or are you comfortable? Are you ready to vote now? Um, I would like to go into executive session briefly, I think, to just to talk through, I think, the rest of uh, the to game the situation out a little bit. Um, so uh, without getting too far into the weeds on the content, but I think content will come up in that conversation. But I don't, I would, I'm not interested in lingering on no, it. No, um, I've got a yeah. quick, concise, but it's not something I can. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, that's fine. That's fine. And would you, would, I would like to invite John to come to executive yeah, session as well. Agreed. Um, all right, I'll take a um, motion to go into it. Uh, are you here? Yes. Uh, and, 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 uh, Peter, would you like to Sorry, what did you say, Joe? I, I asked if you have the, the motion that you need to go into executive session. Well, not yet. <laughs> I would accept a motion to go into executive session for the purpose of discussing next steps on the Shed v. Town of Callis. Um, uh, legal court matter. legal matter, uh, and we'll do that under Section 313 A, E, and F of uh, pending um, civil litigation and uh, attorney client confidential matters. How's that, Joe? That's good. There's only one other part of that that you need to do before you vote on that motion. You need to find that. Uh, oh, I forgot. The majority general public knowledge would place the town at a substantial disadvantage by disclosing litigation strategy and potentially uh, confidential attorney client communication. And we have to do that in a vote? That would be the first vote. Oh, okay. The second vote would be enter executive session to uh, consider pending litigation and to receive um, confidential attorney client communication. It's a two step process. Yeah. Barbara has a question. Either need to say that real slow or send us the text of that motion. Uh, yes, yeah, I can say, uh, let, I can give it to you slowly so you'll, uh, so you'll get it. Okay. The first part is to find that premature general public knowledge would clearly place the town Hold on. at a substantial disadvantage. At, at what disadvantage? At so a substantial disadvantage. Thank you. Okay. By disclosing litigation strategy <clears throat> and confidential. Hold on. By disclosing <throat> litigation. Too fast, litigation Joe. Too fast. Strategy. Litigation strategy. Okay. Yep. And confidential attorney client communication. So that's the first part of the of the motion is that you would someone would make that motion, someone else would second it, and you would vote on that. That's part one. Okay. Will somebody please move that? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. second. Okay, Barbara. Okay, can I, can I just read it back one more time? Yeah. Uh, premature general public knowledge would clearly place the town at substantial disadvantage by disclosing litigation strategy and confidential attorney communications. Perfect. Okay, uh, any discussion? Perfect. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, now will okay. somebody- And now part, part two of the motion now is 
consistent with what you said earlier, Ann, is to enter executive session to consider pending litigation and to receive confidential attorney-client communication. What was the word after the uh, pending litigation? Yes, pending litigation and to receive confidential attorney-client communication. Okay, can I read that back to you, please? To yes. enter executive session to consider pending litigation and to receive confidential attorney-client communication. Correct. Oh, so Joe, so we don't... Have, then we, you would move and second and vote on that part two motion. So we don't actually have to cite the specific statute. We just can use the words. Is that right? Either one is fine. Okay. Um, sometimes you just cite the statute as shorthand, but uh, using the word makes it clear that everyone, so, so that everyone will understand what the reason is. Okay. Will somebody please move that? So moved. Second. You pick any of them, Barbara. They all second. It's now 8.40. Okay. And, 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 and then the last thing you would want to do is just invite, you should invite into the executive session whoever you think is necessary for the executive session. So it would be uh, presumably John Brabant and me. Ah, and do, does that have to be part of the motion? No, we, it's good to have that uh, in the record in a minute. Okay. So I, I would like to invite um, Joe and John into the executive session. Thanks. Do we have to move that? Can mm -hmm. that just, no. that's just done. Okay, let's vote on the motion. Do we have a motion in front of us? Everybody knows what we're voting on. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And John and Joe have been invited in, so um, just you'll just go back and can you turn the camera on? Probably on Sunday. Okay. Okay. Uh, Thanks, Joe. Bye -bye. How do we do? Like we okay. I'll entertain a motion to come out of session. So moved. <coughs> okay. Second. All in favor? Okay. Aye. So this was a motion to come back in, into session. Yeah. Okay. It, it is nine ten nine, nine eleven. Okay. Who made the motion? Jordan made the motion, and uh, some and seconded. And two seconded. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Either man. Okay, would somebody like to make a motion? Decide, do you have it? <laughs> I, I think I have it. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, I would like to move to authorize Town Attorney Joe McLean to respond to the Hold motion. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> sorry. Joe McLean to, I'm sorry. To, to respond to the motion. Okay. Filed to in court. respond to motion? To the motion. To the motion. Well, you mean to the filing? To the, to the motion? No, to yeah, the yeah. Filing. It's responding to, to, to the filing. To the filing. Uh-huh. To the filing that Elizabeth Shedd's attorney made to the court based on our discussions in executive session. Okay, you want to authorize the town attorney, Joe McClain, to respond to the filing that Elizabeth Shedd's attorney made to the court based on discussions and executive session. Thank you. Yes. In Superior Court. Yes, in Superior Court, not in executive session. That <laughs> made, made to Superior Court. Oh, based on the, sorry, based yes. on the. Yeah, but made, yeah. made to Superior yeah. Court based on discussions and executive session. Yes. Okay. okay, everybody got that? We have a second? I'll second. <coughs> Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion passes. Um, now, uh, were we going to vote on, yes, would somebody like to make a motion about appointing liaisons? So you both want to be liaison? Or are we talking about John? John's going to be special assistant. We're going to get him a badge. <laughs> I'm 
mean, that works for me if it works for you I too. To work for you, I suspect we're coming from the same place. Yeah, I think so. I'm just thinking through the logistics of uh, the, commun the communication, but yeah, I, I don't see how there would be any issue. Yeah, there would be any issue. Yeah, I think. Um, yeah, Anne and I could work as. I think you'd be a good, you'd be a good team. Yeah. 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 You've done just, a lot of time yeah. in court, dealing yeah. with yeah. really, yeah. really yeah. difficult. Yeah. Separation, so. yeah. Okay. Okay, I'll make a motion to appoint Jordan and Ann T. and to to, to uh, be special liaisons, be liaisons uh, on behalf of the board. Wait, hold on. The, um, the, the, this has all been cryptic to me. What you've just been saying. You're uh, you're making a motion to appoint Jordan Keys and Ann Tulin. Did I hear that? Yes. yes. And Ann Tulin as what? To work with the town attorney on behalf of the board. And um, to make decisions when there's no time to consult the rest of the board. Okay, to work with the town attorney on behalf of the board. Oh, I'm sorry, on, on, this. The, on this case, on the uh, Shed v. Town of Callis case. Okay, uh, appoint Jordan Keyes and Ann Tulin to work with town attorney Joe McLean on the Shed v. Town case. And to make decisions when the select board is not available. Or yes, that's. Fine. But I feel like that last part is totally. No, you don't. Put no, it. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I, I okay. think there are very few situations where they would be making decisions okay. without consulting. All right, strike that last that clause. Yeah. So you just appointed them to be li liaisons. Yeah. Yes. And I don't know how we official we have to be <laughs> about appointing you special assistant. Reach out to me when you want. Yeah. Is this okay. a separate, separate motion? Or and we don't, we're, I don't think that, that needs to be. Or, or not, I don't think that needs to be. Okay. okay. Well, I, I'm not clear. Is John the main person no. talking to? No, no. Okay. He's just available. He's just no. available to help us. Okay. Yeah, we so, at a point, John Bray got a special No, no, we're not going to do that. Okay. Except for the badge. Okay. I do, I do have a question about. I just want to know, is there a record somewhere of all of the neighbors who had to deal with this situation before it got to the point of passing an ordinance? And Like, is there a really good written record of that somewhere? Uh, well, there was a um, really good written record, but Wilson deleted it. Um, but uh, Who's record, Wilson, by the way? Wilson was our constable for a very long time. And, and animal control officer. And animal officer. control officer. And he was actually very well trained. He was really good at his job. But when he retired from it at the end of whatever year that was, two years ago, um, he decided to delete all the emails. And that's why we need really good emails and record retention. Oh, yeah. Systems. So, but we have a lot of it because he, the emails were to us. And, um, and Denise, and not, that has all been forwarded to Joe. Joe has all that. But he never constructed like a like a timeline as a, as a work product for that. As, as upon his exit, he summarized. Um, well, no, this was important. Um, he summarized, you know, the history um, in a in an email, um, and I thought I'd find that and send it and establish. Well, you probably submitted that to the court. It's probably all. Uh, yeah, that was, that was in the record. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And there was testimony yeah. given on that. And um, I'll just say, real, real, real frankly, that um, it's a good thing he wrote it down, and it's a good thing we had copy, because Wilson ended up being a witness for the for Ms. Shed, and his testimony directly contradicted his emails. So on cross cross examination, he would say, "Oh yeah, yeah." So um, he also what was came out for it was that at the same time he was animal control officer and constable, he was on he was getting paid by Carl Shed, the father, to help assist Elizabeth with the horses. So it was a very uncomfortable court hearing for a lot of reasons, including when they should get on stand. So it just got weird um, and uncomfortable. And but there is a record, um, and we and that, and that is in the court record. Uh, a 
we have a motion on the table. We do not have a second. I made the motion, so I can't second. I will second it. All right, further discussion on the, on the motion. Remind me of the motion on I know. Just appointing you to. Oh, okay. Is it appointing or? Barbara, will you read the motion? Yeah, <laughs> appoint Jordan Keyes as liaison to the, uh, uh, oh no, and, uh, oh, Jordan, and Anne Tulin. <coughs> appoint Jordan Keyes and Anne Tulin as liaisons to work with the town attorney on the Shed v. Town case. Everybody, and that's been moved and seconded. Is there further discussion? All, all in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, thank you. And John, thank you for uh, being by, standing by. I like the end, but she goes, and two, and two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that really works, that's pretty great. Yeah, you're welcome. Happy to help. All right. I'm really sorry I did miss those two items. I think they'll both be very fast. Crack seals. Pardon me? Got our crack sealers. Yes, right. Okay, so the first one um, we'll bring up is that roads. Um, so the, we put uh, 15000 in the budget to do the um, pavement crack, crack sealant. Seal. And they have put that out to bid. They've got a bid for fourteen four hundred, and they would like us to authorize them to spend it. Usually, the road commissioner would do that, but um, we don't have one right now. Uh, something we'll talk about on Sunday. I suppose Rick is officially the road I, I, commissioner, I think Rick is still but Rick Rick asked them to to just run it by us because he was trying to be sure that it was okay. So, any questions? So I'm not sure if I'm up to speed on the minutes here because I think. You're talking to a group of people who knows what you're talking about. So, well, we're going to make a motion. In a okay, minute, okay. And that's you. all you need to put in. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, I actually wrote it down this time so that it could be fast. I would entertain a motion to move to authorize acceptance of the bid for fourteen thousand four hundred dollars to be expended from the highway department budget for pavement crack sealing. Does that work for you guys? Okay. Barbara, move to authorize the expenditure. Oh, you could just email that to me. If you've yeah. already gotten it all written, if you could just email it to me, I'll drop it into the minutes. Would that be okay? That's fine. Thank you. Second? Oh, sorry, we need to move it. Who? Uh, so moved. Second. Discussion? Gabrielle. Yes, thank you. Discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, last thing is the... Go ahead. It's not going to be the last. <laughs> uh, we, got we got two more things. Two more. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay, the Woodbury Fire Department. Uh, I don't know, remember if I explained that. I, I sent some stuff to you. Um, they are in, they have, um, they are going to build a new fire station. The fire station is going to cost 1.3 million. They would like they, they would like to send letters and request that these, our senators, Welsh and, um, and Sanders, use their senatorial earmarks, they're, I learned today that they're called, to give us 15%, to give the Woodbury Fire Department, as a grant, 15% of that amount. They wrote this, uh, one of the guys wrote this letter, I think it needs a little bit of work, um, that we would send to the senators. He, they said it needs to be sent by Thursday. So what we need to do if we want to send such a letter is, uh, I guess, authorize one of us to clean it up a little bit. You want to take a minute to read it, or are you all okay? It's not a commitment, it's just a... Correct. Uh, it's an out no grant with... Yeah. It's a letter of support. It's a letter of support. Yeah. I mean, under ordinary circumstances, I'd want to think about all the other things we might want to support, but since it's the end of the year, we're not going to figure out anything else in the next couple of weeks, so... Services, if we got a similar request before the end of the year, <laughs> there's no reason not to, We'd not to support them in their endeavors, from my perspective. Okay. Um, yeah. But I definitely think uh, wordsmithing. Word but 
Yeah, it should say like how much money they're asking for, for example, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. So um, the guy that sent it to us is Norm Etkind. I talked to him. He's working on it a little more, but I think if you authorize one of us to just clean it up with his help, we can do it. It's mostly that last paragraph that needs to be fixed. So, are you looking for a volunteer to clean it up? Uh, sure, I'll take a volunteer if somebody wants to. <laughs> I'd be willing to do it too if nobody else wants yeah, to. Yeah, I don't mind. I mean, it, approximately this length, just tightening it up. Yeah, I mean, support for the earmark. I mean, I would, you can clean that piece up a little bit. What they mean. directed spending. Maybe. Is that what it is? It's not called yes. an earmark, no. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and I can get, well, you have Norm's contact information. I called him and he answered right away. And he'll work, he, you can work together on that. And, um, <laughs> and I think then what we need, would need is a motion to support the letter and to authorize Anne to clean it up and sign it on our behalf. So it's I can share with you all before. Well, no, because we well, won't be able to circulate and approve oh, it. Oh, check, 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 check. So okay. we have to authorize somebody oh. to make we could we could authorize two people. Gabrielle, you could you could take a look at it. And, uh, that has recently changed. It's, I think they have allowed collaboration through email. I thought I thought the issue was just that you, when you reply, you don't reply all, but you can add comments. So if she's not looking for approval from all of us, but she just wants to run it by, you us. can certainly send her comments. Right. That's you're right. I'm sorry. That's correct. Right. So but we can't all. But, but, but she could still send. need to authorize her to sign it and send it, right? We, I don't think we can do that via email. That's doing no. the town business. Yes, yeah, so we would have to make that authorization now, but we, okay. could, we could send uh, yeah. input yeah. Uh, in, the, yeah. in the interim. I'm fine with authorizing and to sign it, uh, it would, you know, it's always nice to get a final look at what was going on. Okay. So would you be able to uh, work with Norm and get us something maybe tomorrow night or the next day so we would have time to respond? Tomorrow night, probably Wednesday morning. Okay. Tomorrow between snowstorms and doctor's appointments. Okay. But Does that work for everybody? Okay. All right. Tomorrow. Will somebody make a motion to that effect? How about, how about this? <coughs> Authorize Ann Tulin to write a letter of support for federal funds to support the construction of a new fire station for the Woodbury Fire Department and to sign on behalf of the select board. So moved. So. I'll send you that one too, Barbara. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Further discussion? All in favor? Who, who seconded? Aye. Right. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Okay. And the last thing is agenda. Right, Barbara? Yes. The one more thing, which is, does this body want to ask Orca to videotape oh, Sunday's yes. six-hour session? <laughs> which is going to be just the best summer. Everybody's <laughs> going to. Uh, I think considering uh, it is uh, largely a bring them up to speed uh, working session, I don't think it's probably necessary. Uh, for Orca to participate in that particular one. Yeah, we all agree. I'm yeah. just posing the question. I just need to know whether to book them or not. Not know. unless they come with couches and comfortable chairs. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 Any further discussion on that? Okay, I, I agree. I'm okay, yeah. okay. I'm sorry, I'm not clear on who, who so you're going to send me the verbiage on that last I will. Uh, motion. Who who made the motion? Who seconded it? You made it? You made it, and I seconded Thank it. Thank you. No I don't think we need a motion on this one. You got the direction? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, can we go to content of that meeting? Um, I have done a, I meant to send you this and I forgot. Um, I would sit, uh, gosh, 
Given the way this one's gone, <laughs> I probably am not uh, allocating enough time for each of these things. But I was thinking of um, about 45 minutes on uh, adopting rules of procedure, talking about who's going to take the lead on which issues, having our document and email sharing discussion. Um, and we need to, we have a long list of our. Is that 45 minutes each for those three things? No. You said? This is for the whole thing. That's wrong, isn't it? No. It's going to take a lot more time. Uh, well, this is what I see that we need to do in terms of getting ourselves organized. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other thing, and maybe we don't need to do this that morning, but we have a long list of people. We don't have people, but we, a point, uh, positions to fill, like planning commission, uh, animal control officer, mm -hmm. and so on. And at some point, we've got it soon. We have to get hold of that list. Barbara has it. Mm -hmm. And uh, think about how to recruit people for those positions and make a plan. And I was hoping we would have time to dig into that one. Who's the gentleman who said the thing about communication with the green sweatshirt? Did you, did anybody catch his name? What, what did he say? He, he said that you need uh, longer, more detailed minutes oh, because- oh, oh, that oh, that was Scott. Scott passage. Passage. Okay. Yeah. 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 We're, yeah. No, no, I'm, I'm just- That's right, that we need to have that discussion too. Yeah. How we, what we want to do about the minutes, so. Yeah. Is, is there? I think we have a lot of uh, stuff to kind of just get caught up on that are pretty important. While I recognize that all the appointments are important, I think they are kind of falling at a, at a lower priority. And one, yeah. one of the things that I think would be worth uh, having a discussion about is um, is committee collaboration and some policy work on kind of standards of minutes across the across our our group, their groups, how they're getting posted, where they're getting posted, um, and it'd be nice to put that into some of the appointment conversations. But you're saying we won't have time to do that Sunday, or you're no, saying that I, should I don't be think an so. agenda? I don't okay. think that should be an agenda. I think it'd be good to review maybe the list of appointments and if there are ones that we can start soliciting because we low hanging fruit, low yeah. Up, then we, we should probably move forward with those. But. So how about if we devote an hour to this discussion and we'll prioritize things and get get through it as far as we can? Yeah. yeah. And I think priority yeah. is the document. Yeah. That's one of the priorities anyway. The, the, the piece that you started tonight. And meeting minute. And, yeah. Strategy. What, sorry, what document? Document sharing. The document sharing oh, and yeah, emails yeah. and all that. Yeah, um, I'm sorry, what was that second one, Jamie? Oh, minutes. Minutes. Okay. And uh, agendas. Minutes, minutes, that's one discussion, yeah. yeah. Um, let's see, rules procedure. We have to get those in place. So yeah. maybe that's number three. I'd say we should probably just open with that. Are we anticipating yeah. much dialogue about, around that? I'm having a hard time thinking oh, I'm sorry. you guys are saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the voices are dropping. Uh, Do I need to be taking minutes? I don't think you need to. I don't think so. No, no. I think we'll, okay. just, we'll just call Stay it a uh, discuss agenda okay. for... Um, yeah, okay. for and then I'll session. do up an agenda. Okay. Because I'm getting... Okay. So, so, may I... May I? So Thank one you. thing, at some point, this board will need to approve the town meeting minutes. Not priority. You've got a year to get that done. But that's not your side of it. I've got it. But we might want to try to get this meeting minutes approved because it's from this meeting's minutes being approved that I can go to the bank and get Jamie and uh, Tegan and Sandra set up for check authorization. Okay. You're going to do that from the approved minutes of this meeting. So yeah. we'll put that at the very top. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, approved minutes, and then probably followed by uh, rules and procedures. Okay. Rules, and then documents. I think the email communication and shared stuff it is going to be a fairly quick conversation. Oh. Okay. I think so. I mean. We can get into whatever weeds anybody wants to get into, but it, it's, I, I imagine at that point it's likely going to be a proposal and a conversation around budget and et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And timelines. 
So um, other things that I had, and you may have more, is um, to talk about who's going to take the lead on various issues. But maybe we want to wait till we understand the issues better before we do that, unless anybody knows. If so. One of the things actually, well, we'll, we'll talk about roads, so we can, we can think about who wants to take the lead on roads when we get to that discussion. Um, but other than that, I think the rest can wait. So, okay. Were you gonna have, like, for example, with grants, were you gonna have Donna Fitch come in and talk about grants? Was that part of it, was we bring in Laura Little, like, consulting expert, so to speak? Yeah, uh, that I was, let me see now. I, we've made so much progress on the personnel thing that I, I had kind of bumped that one down now because I think we're good. that one's good for a while. But we are gonna have to have a whole financial discussion and I was thinking we'd talk about grants and that. I'm thinking we do this organizational stuff. We do a public hearing for an hour, then we do roads and then we do finances. And that's a very full day. Are we gonna have a working lunch or just a lunch break? And are we are we having food? <laughs> no, 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 this is really yeah, important. It's it's six hour hour meeting. I should have, I should have brought my dinner. Yeah. Like and yeah, and we should talk. I, what is the rule about food in here, actually? Okay, we. I was thinking of about a half hour break for lunch, and we're getting pizza from the Whammy Bar. Okay. And actually, Barbara's gonna be in charge of food. She's gonna. Uh, she's gonna get us some drinks, some pizza, and some yeah, snacks. Yeah, I, I will make sure you've got snacks throughout the morning, snacks throughout the afternoon, both healthy and not healthy, <laughs> <laughs> and beverages. So there will be things here for you guys to nosh on throughout the day, in addition to the pizza from Whammy, which was what they chose to go with. So you'll. I think you'll be okay. We'll, we'll try that, to take care of you. Is that okay with everybody? That's great. Yeah, pizza. That's, that's good. We were thinking of, ever, Jamie was suggesting a vegetarian pizza and a meat, a, a non-vegetarian pizza, so. Do we have vegetarian, I mean, I don't. I don't know. want to drink to dairy, but I'll bring hummus and pita, it's fine. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And okay. so I just want to make sure I understand, you're going to be feeding yeah. seven people, is that correct? These five, plus the, the rows who will be working all day for you, yeah. and, and as, as we did, stay all day. So. That's all, but and that's all you'll be feeding that day, right? If other people are in attendance, no food. they're not getting fed. <laughs> no food for them, no for you. Oh boy, yeah. I, 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 I think we should probably just put in a schedule, uh, kind of uh, yeah. uh, not an adjournment, but a uh, lunch break. A lunch, lunch break. break um, yeah. For. for for select board, for select board and, and re 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 recording or something. You mean tell them that we've got food, but we're not sharing them. <laughs> no. Well, lunch just, break food yeah. not provided because the food. Yeah, I, mean, I, 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 I don't. I don't even know that we would necessarily need to do that. It's our. It's our meeting to conduct business in, and we're inviting participation by anybody agenda item that they'd like to contribute to so presumably they would show up to whatever relevant topic they're going to show up to uh, and, and we're there to work through our business so okay. you know I don't I don't think there's really any obligation other than to try to get a, a good schedule and try to keep to it as realistically as possible and yeah. make sure we're taking care of our needs uh, somewhere in the middle of the day or throughout the day um, Okay, so we got the, the organizational part. I was hoping, and again, I scheduled, what, half an hour for this, which is probably wrong. Not, oh, less than half an hour. Executive session with town attorney to get briefed on Curtis Pond issues and road crew union negotiations. How long do you think we need for that? Is that actually, that's with uh, the town attorney as opposed to? Yeah, Joe asked for this. Yeah. He wants to go into executive session and tell us all the stuff that's been going on in executive session that the town is all wondering about uh, regarding Curtis Pond and the, uh, the union negotiations. They just want to bring us up to speed on that. And after that, we can choose when we want to go into executive session, but we have to go into executive session to find out what happened in executive session. Mm -hmm. And as part of that, 
We're going to have to decide what to do with Jamie. Right. Should I give my... So, I am vice president of the Curtis Pond Association um, and have been part of this effort since the beginning. I chair the fundraising committee. Um, my thought is that I, I've been thinking a lot about the potential of a um, what's the word? Conflict, conflict or an interest. appearance of a conflict mm -hmm. of interest. Um, I feel confident in my ability to um, you know, act in the best interest of the town. Um, I would like to offer that I will um, abstain from any votes related to the Curtis Pond Dam issue. But I would like to remain a part of the conversations and discussions of the issue because I believe that having my background knowledge and information will be beneficial to the conversations. I think that's a pretty fair balance. I think at some point you're going to need to, you know, state to everybody yes. that I have, I, what you just said. Yes, yeah. But, but be very clear that you feel you can act on behalf of the town in an unbiased way. And actually, the law is, it's up to Jamie to decide. Right. We cannot force her to do anything. Um, <coughs> and I think there was a, there's a previous agenda item um, of updating the conflict of interest uh, policy uh, for, the, for the town that I think we should uh, uh, visit sooner than later. There, there was one that was fairly complete. It, I think it's a matter of kind of refining it and including it. But, um, Quote me on this, but I think there's uh, there's a requirement to um, a statutory requirement to say why you're recru uh, recusing yourself if you are recusing yourself from a particular she's, issue. She's and actually not recusing not. herself. She's no, 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 no. I just I'm just saying as part of a conflict of interest policy. Right. And previously, yes. when other folks have recused themselves, they haven't always done that consistently, mm -hmm. and I think that at the very least is important. For, for those conversations. Sure. Um, and so, anyway, all to say that I think that's one of the policies that should be on the short list of, okay. probably not, I wouldn't propose doing it for that particular reason. Oh, no, right. Okay. okay. So, we've got lists all over the place. Can I ask a question? Did we authorize a select board member to release insurance payment to Bill of Dave? We did. We yes. did, okay. Uh, but well, Barbara's going to do it. We authorize Barbara. Yeah. Many, many moons. All right. Um, then I was thinking, uh, are we, we're going to have to do that somehow. Uh, this may be too much. Uh, how long would you like to uh, allocate for executive session on that? Is he on a retainer, or is it? Oh, that's <laughs> something wrong with that. That's a question to ask. Um, yeah. I'll share that with you another yeah. time, but they've done way, way over budget. They budgeted 10,000 for attorney fees. And as of right now, with still four months to go, four months, a couple of months anyway, in the fiscal year they've gone to, what was it, 88? 88,000 over. Is there so a breakdown in what, in what, the, yeah. what that is? It's all in um, the packet. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, but it's just the packet, I'm not. No, no, the, no, it, no, what Jamie means is. The board orders that we signed. Well, so all you're going to see in that one is. So um, this month. All, all this month. The same as the most recent ones right. that I need to authorize. If you guys want a, 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 an entire report of legal fees, we would ask for to provide that to you. Okay. I think that yeah. might be useful. Where is the packet? The board orders. It's signed down to Barbara. So, so, so they signed things and passed them down like Oh, okay. Do you want okay. these back right No, now? never mind. I just was going to okay. show it to folks. Okay. Okay. If you want the envelope. Yeah, I'll but, but the back. short answer, answer is, is he charges by the minute yeah. for every minute we talk to him. Well, and I think that the, for the fellows with the work through, I think that piece is going to simmer all the way down. I don't 
think he's going to need a whole lot for. Uh, be lovely. Think, be lovely. Things have changed and great. I think it's going to be fine. And then the Curtis Bond, I, maybe we could try to think of a time frame because yes, as we went on and on, I'm like, how much does this cost? Because I know we have spent lots and lots of money. I think we just had a hundred dollar conversation with right. Joe. Just now. That was about At half least. an hour. Yeah, he charges two hundred an hour. Joe with the Curtis Pond issue or the other lawyer? He is going to want to bring in Bob Fletcher, who is the bond attorney. And then we're going to, so we're going to get charged for both of them. And they want to come in person and they will charge us half, they charge us $100 an hour for travel time. Can we not have them on Sunday and still learn what we need to learn about Curtis Pond and, um, and the road crew? We can learn what the Curtis Pond Association can tell us, but they haven't been in the executive sessions. The only people who have would be other select board members and the attorneys. My concern at this point is that we've got <clears throat> we've got a number of issues that are uh, that are down the road, um, and uh, we we need to get brought up to speed and frankly trained. going to be associated with that. So I'm not sure I'd be comfortable with with signing, you know, in, including them in there for financial reasons at this point because we at the very least need to be brought up to speed to where everything is. Including the attorneys? I'm sorry? No, we need I I, I think we need to include oh, the, okay. attorney, the attorneys in the initial conversations before we can start investigating other whatever our options are. Would, would it make sense? Particularly on the bonding side, for, from, I, I don't have any experience. Yeah, the bonding side. Um, I think the other ones. Sandra has done municipal bonds before, mm -hmm. so that is helpful. Um, would it be helpful to have an executive session with one or more former select board members to get their perspective, their interpretation of what's been told to them in executive session to give us a general background so that we don't have to be asking really basic questions to the attorneys. I would almost prefer to... at this point hearing the straight debriefing from the attorneys before before uh, and invited the other content. We can always go back and do that, but uh, there's a certain amount what the attorney's presentations are on these matters. Um, uh, and, and I'm happy to do okay. I'm just wondering if you would want to consider rather than having to break out your executive sessions during this six hour work day, if you could book those with the attorneys, those executive sessions one night next week and not make it be part of a long six mm -hmm. hour work day with people having to step in and out and executive session in and out of the and then maybe they wouldn't come in person if it was on a Monday night. They and, really and want to see us in person. They're going to push for it. We can tell them no. You, you, they work for you. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah I, that's what I'm saying. We can tell them no, but uh, they want to. They want to meet us face to face. Yeah, and I would just say a counterpoint to Jordan's observation is I feel like we'd get more straight dope from, say, Mark and Molly than we would from the lawyers. But Mark wasn't in the executive sessions. Around Oh, uh, uh, right. Okay. Got it. And I would want to handle them at least uh, separately, uh, just because sure. having a, a, a very large group conversation is going to take longer. Um, 
so I, I think there would be some cost efficiency to, uh, to splitting splitting those up if we're going to hear from folks who are involved from the previous select board and, and the lawyers who are probably trying to do it a little bit slowly. Okay, so if we wanted to do something next week, next week so after, between Monday, it would have to be like a Wednesday or something like that. Do you guys want to do that? If we can get them to talk to us just for the purpose of going into executive session to learn about the Curtis Pond Dam issue? I'm going to be traveling uh, Tuesday through Thursday, coming back late Thursday night. So Monday would be my only option, or I guess Friday, but it's going to be kind of tightened. How about just at the next regular meeting? Or with, so if the objection to doing it in the sixth hour meeting is just the the sorry, I'm not clear what the objection is. Well, I think the logistics of I mean if I were saying if we're in and out of executive session, people are here or not here or but by having an executive session during the week in the evening one might not have that have them travel. I guess they really want to do that. But in theory we could have them on the phone, it could be a tighter, more focused, get the skinny and move on. I mean, I guess we run the risk if they come on Sunday and the train isn't that they could be waiting and, you know. Or, or book the executive sessions at the very beginning, your first hour or at the very end. Yes. And that way, your recording secretary would know when to arrive right. and when she's dismissed. She wouldn't have to be sitting around your painter yeah. to be sitting around while you guys are in the executive session if you want to do it on Sunday. Well, let's, can we just ta good. table that decision for the moment, and I'll give you the rest of what I was thinking about, and then we can circle back to this. Does that make sense? So, um, I would, since we didn't get to do the public input portion, I was hoping we could do an hour, and I would ask people to uh, focus on three questions. What issues do you think are high priority for the, the select board to address? Who should we hear from or consult with on those issues? And are there other lower priorities that the select board should address to try to focus what happens? So I was thinking of an hour on that, where people would come and we would ask them to sign up if they wanted to speak, and then we'll divide the time between them, among them. I was just concerned that doing it on a Sunday feels like oh, yeah. hiding it or something. And I and I replied only to you did. Anne on that, my concerns about that because of the whole, you know, content thing with uh, talking to everybody, so I don't know. That but how, but, uh, but and did you, I would think that we would do it again another time, and this would take the pressure so that not everybody wanted to come. Do you feel pressure to have I, public input? No. Uh, what I think is if um, 30 people show up, we're going to have to give everybody two minutes. And I would rather, you know, 15 showed up now and 15 showed up another time. That's what, that was my concern. Okay. I'm, I'm hoping that folks recognize the kind of extenuating circumstances and the kind of scope of outstanding business and, and see that uh, doing, having a special meeting on a Sunday um, to kind of act as a debriefing um, opportunity just kind of recognizing that as not some sort of subversive attempt to uh, dissuade yeah. participation, but as a really uh, efficient way for, for for us to get up to speed um, as quickly as possible on, on and identifying what, what the priorities are. Um, and everybody I've talked to has said, that's a great idea. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not hearing anything negative on that. Um, then I was thinking uh, an, about an hour and a half or so with the road on um, roads, and uh, that we would have the uh, one or two members of the road crew just come and talk to us for about half an hour or twenty minutes about what they do and what their concerns are and how they would like to work with us and that sort of thing. Then um, we've had enough time. I wonder. Especially uh, the, with the, you know, are they going to talk about the burgeoning union issue? Well, I was going to say, no. at least prior, they weren't able to, I think they had a 
previous posture that they didn't meet with select board members without the representation present. I'm oh, I've That's already talked to Tyler about it. He okay. said he would come. All right. He, he's fine with that. Yeah, and I we, we talked to him a little bit about the, the mm -hmm. union and said, you know, it's going to be a while before we can get to it. And he said, that's okay, I don't worry about it. So I, I think we've at least got a little time to, to establish a relationship and figure things out. Um, so uh, then I wanted to, I was thinking of an hour or so um, with Rick and Toby. Rick has been acting road commissioner. He particularly wants to talk about um, some areas that are of concern, like the Moscow Woods Bridge. Um, just bring us up to speed on the, the things that they're dealing with. Toby uh, has been the grants administrator. He stopped doing that when last fall? In September. In September. Nobody's picked that up. Um, Toby has agreed to, if we would, would want him to come back and pick it up again and get that part of the the, the road budget stuff in shape. And so he would talk to us about the grants that are outstanding, other revenue sources, the, the overall highway budget piece, and how he might work with us and maybe make a proposal to us. So that's, an, um, maybe that's two hours. <laughs> this is probably going way over six hours. Um, Every Sunday. Yeah. And then um, budgets. Wendy has offered, Wendy is the Nemert woman. She's offered to come and spend an hour or so with us going through financial statements, walking us through the budget, showing us how to read the statements, and just talking about how we would work with well, it put, wouldn't be her so much anymore. It would be Sandra. And now that we have Sandra on board, Sandra says she'll come too and participate in this discussion. So I think we've got probably more than an hour there. So my thing about that is I feel like maybe the other stuff is more important, like the road, the road people. And so if you need to cut time, I would suggest we just do that during one of our regular meetings, the budget walkthrough stuff. Okay. Wendy, Wendy really was anxious that we learn how to read those financial statements right away. So maybe we could at least just do that piece. Because she okay. said she could do that in half an hour. And she would do it remotely? Yes. Right. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I feel less pressure on the finance okay. side, considering that the budget was freshly passed and Presumably, it would have been a fairly comfortable, uh, comfortable yes. position to end out the year. Okay, so, sure. so try to cut that one down a little bit and really have a good discussion about the roads then. All right. And what about then, let's go back to executive session. Do you want to try to jam some of that into? As much as it pains to say it, we should, I think there's probably some efficiency to do that at the end of the meeting. Um, it, we're all going to be probably exhausted, but um, maybe that'll keep the conversation shorter. <laughs> uh, but I think uh, you know it'd be nice. I think to, are we so is the Curtis Pond Association presentation on on, on the agenda? Is that no? Oh, okay. I didn't have that on the agenda. I was thinking that would be the next meeting. Um, although they've they kind of um, it sounds like there's still a lot of information to get yeah. sorted out and organized, so I, I'd say we could maybe table that. Except for the ex except for the executive session stuff? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so executive session last. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Or first. Oh, you want to do that first before we organize? Mm -hmm. I, we could. I, I, the only thing about last is I give it a 90% likelihood that we'll go late based yeah, on we, today we to and, we don't, and if they walk, if they oh, come, okay. either way, they're sitting around billing us, waiting for us to be ready. It might be worth having them at the beginning. I think it's going to be a, a nice good test on sticking to a schedule. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I think with tonight's agenda it kind of ballooned because we had a lot of stuff in the scope of the conversations kind of yeah. prepped out. Uh, so I, this is the first 
time we've all met. Yeah. Right. I mean, I I was I haven't talked to anybody about Sandra's proposal prior to tonight, and mm -hmm. it, that's a lot of money. You know, so I would have liked to have a much longer conversation about it, honestly. But mm -hmm. um, I know it's just really important to move on it. So, and it's an interim. So there you go. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, we wouldn't have done it that way if it weren't interim. We would have yeah. advertised it and interviewed people and, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay. I, I think we... We could do that and then do but the roads and yeah. just, I'm so deflated. <laughs> <They're> just, <laughs> uh, Wait, what's gonna be deflating? Uh, starting the day talking about legal issues and being brought up to speed on uh, on on all the different legal things. How can we be how can we limit their time? Like how can we be strict with them about time? How can we be strict? I would bother me. further ask, how can we be strict <laughs> with ourselves? Right. Ask less questions. <laughs> we, I mean, I mean yeah, I don't know. Yeah, the, the, the first obvious one is they, they don't travel here. They need to do it by phone. We can make them, we can tell them to do that if you want. Um, I guess maybe the thing to do is just tell them we're concerned about their time and we just we just really need to be efficient with time. So that, that way if they want to come in person and they think that's important to meet us, which, you know, I get that, um, I just want them to be forewarned. Can we ask them to propose a, a sub-agenda or organize a list of topics that they're going to talk about? They and, have, uh, have two, to pick, two topics. You know, Well, maybe we could say we don't want to hear about the union right now. What do you think about that, Anne? Yeah, I, I, I don't think it's going to be a major hassle for us. So why don't, yeah, because I mean, they can stick to the bond issues because I don't know anything about it or that the town help owns it or like so many things I do not understand about it. So, And one of the things we're going to need to decide is whether you know, the CPA has um, has offered to give us their attorney, their bond attorney. And we need to decide whether we want to do that and share with them or whether we want to stay with ours and let them have theirs. We need to have that discussion at some point. It would be helpful to meet with the CPA bond attorney before we make that decision. Of course, yeah. of course, yeah. Well, I think that, that really then, if we're not going to have the roads uh, particular, the employment conversation uh, related to the roads. I like the idea that the, the roads crew is uh, is already engaged and willing to come and have a chat and Rick and Toby are. Those are, those are important conversations I think to have. We can table the legal conversation and then just really leave the legal um, executive session uh, relative to um, the bonds work and then use that to inform a dialogue with the CPAs. Now, I do have uh, a confidential memo. The bond attorney did send that to me. It's a memo that he sent to uh, the, the select board. I didn't share it with you because I wanted to hear whether or not we were going to share with Jamie first, because they did not share that with Mark. He doesn't know what's in it. Well, he does know what's in it, but he doesn't actually know the details of it. Um, so I do want to send that to you. And I can, I'm, I, are you okay with me sharing it with Jamie at this point? Jamie knows she can't share it with anyone else. I mean, at some point we might even want to make it public. I don't know, but I want you all to read it first. And then we'll have a conversation about that. Okay, I'm going to do that then. Um, all right, so do I have this? We're going to, um, we would like to do executive session just on the Curtis Pond issues with the two attorneys. We're going to ask them if we can do it over the phone, or did we make a decision on that? And or, the executive session is going to be about executive sessions 
that the select board had previously about the Curtis Pond. Yes. At the, I mean, I can tell you what's going to happen. They're going to tell us every worst case liability scenario that could possibly happen as we go through this. And, they're and, and Joe will tell you this right up front. And they will give us a very conservative view of what we need to do to protect ourselves from any potential liability ever. Okay? And then we're going to have to decide whether that's how we want to go or whether we're willing to be a little more um, creative or flexible. Because mm -hmm. okay? that's their job. Their job mm -hmm. is to think of everything awful that can happen to us. And that's what they'll tell us and they will advise us to, to stay away from that kind of issue. And, I, and we need to hear what they have to say. And they, their recommendation has always been that that should be done in executive session because we don't want to make that public as to what people might sue us for, <laughs> kind of thing. Okay, good little trick. <laughs> um, Is it possible that uh, that that can be summarized? And yes, you will see a lot of that in the memo that I'm going to send you. Okay. Okay, so we're going to get, uh, we're going to do that first, then we're going to do the organizational stuff, and then we are going to do roads, and then we're going to do a walkthrough, a sh just the, all we're going to do is a, a one hour thing with Wendy maybe, or less. Is that right? Have we all invite San Sandra, and Sandra will just be how to walk through the financials. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there may be one or two other things they want to do, but Wendy said she could do it in about half an hour. I'm guessing with the way this group asks questions, it'll be a little more than that. Well, I'm wondering, is, you said Wendy thought that she could do a presentation in a half an hour. I, I think a conversation with, uh, with Sandra about the, kind of the scope of her work and prioritizing some of the, the uh, items on her list would be a worthwhile thing if she's going to be present. I think I got enough here that I can put something together. Right. And then we can offer feedback directly to you. Um, oh, we can I have group emails in turn when we're doing organizational stuff, but we can't we can't uh, do that if there's any business involved. So for purposes of putting an agenda together, we can have a, a group discussion about that. Good. All right. Well, let we wind down here yeah. and adjourn and finish that by email. Oh, I would love to make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're ready. Please do so. <laughs> I make a motion to adjourn. I second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.